Crankworx FMBA Slope Style World Champion Brett Reeder is bad. The good kind of bad. Don't for a second let his Canadian low-key demeanor fool you. Reader is the kind of bad that does glorious things like this. This is humongous! And with his win at Crankworx stop number one in Rotorua, he's the only rider that has a shot at the triple crown of slope style. Can Reader keep the good times rolling here in Innsbruck? Or will riders like the 2018 Red Bull Joyride champ Nikolai Rogakin Nikolai Rogakin wins the triple crown of slope style! 2017 slope style world champ Emil Yuansun or someone else in this totally stacked field put a stop to Reader's Triple Crown aspirations with a win of their own? Stop number two of the Crankworx FMBA World Slope Style Tour. Oh, the crowd goes wild! The Crankworx Innsbruck Slope Style is coming at you. Live and direct from the Austrian Alps. Calm down, and I've swapped my brother out for this tall guy, Martin Soderstrom, I'm your host, Cam McCall, alongside this tall Swede here, and we're gonna have an exciting competition today. Stop two of the Crankworx World Tour right here, Innsbruck, Austria. Martin, we've been watching practice, thoughts? Wow, I would say this is um, gonna be very exciting, and the wind looks a lot better, as you said. The course is running great, and uh, yeah, it's just gonna be a really, really good show. I'm like, nervous. I'm actually more nervous about talking obviously it's my first time yeah. doing this so um, you're gonna do great it's gonna be so exciting you're gonna have no problem because it's just gonna all fall out of you because guys are gonna be putting on great shows like a guy who's been putting on a great show for us all week this is day four of competition here at Crankworx Innsbruck and all week we've been watching Thomas Lemoyne who will be competing out here today but he also competes in a ton of different disciplines out here he's the current leader for King of Crankworx and if you're not familiar with what that is that is collecting all your points from all your different disciplines throughout the three World Tour stops. Whoever wins that's going to take home $25,000. Be the king. They'll represent that crown for the next year. Lemoyne's got his sights on that. He's currently leading the points. Now, this is a real exciting story. Last year, the big question was, where is Emil Johansson? Martin, you know a lot about this kid. How excited are you to see him back? Oh man, so excited. I've been riding with him a little bit lately and that haven't been very exciting for me because he's <laughs> insanely good and it's weird with him. Like, he doesn't seem to have to ride that much. He's been gone after Rotorua. He had a bit of bad luck and was gone for a couple more weeks with another like small injury. But then when I see him riding, it's like he was never gone. Well, he was the 2017 world champion, absent from last season. He came back in for one event, the last event in Whistler, but he's healthy now. We'll explain you all the details later in the show. But you got to talk about Nikolai Ragakin when you're here in Innsbruck looking at the slope style course because he's undefeated on this course. This is the third year we've been back here. He won the first two. He's looking incredibly strong. He started his season out a little tough, though, didn't he? Exactly. He's going to be very hungry for revenge. And look at that guy. He is, you can see in his eyes that he wants to go big for himself and for the fans. So for Nikolai to not get a good result at stop number one of this 2019 season, it was surprising because last year he won the triple crown. Now, who did win the first stop of the 2019 season? That was all about a familiar face. Brett Reeder, he was actually the 2018 world champion. So he's coming in strong, carrying the, moment, the momentum from the 2018 season by winning the first stop. Check out this run, Martin. Yeah, I would say that he was like a different level at the first event. I mean, he look at this, just linking together banger after banger, 360 double whip, kind of my trick. I don't like, know if you asked me about that before. Hollywood special effects are so good these days. If I wasn't here watching this with my own eyes, I would be curious. Did you guys fake this with some computers? Because look at this stuff. Like oh my backflip tail whip off of the flat drop. He had cork 720s both ways. He ended it with a regular cork 720 with the bar spin. And even though his foot came off a tiny little bit, look at that, just a little bit. His run was such leaps and bounds above the rest. You see Nikolai Rogakin giving credit where credit is due. Brett Reeder showing that he's still the man to beat. After beating the world champion last year, he finished high enough, even though Nikolai won three out of the four events, he did well enough at all those that he was still the world champion. And these are the tricks he did. Now, what comes to mind when you look at this trick list, Martin? <laughs> Everything comes to mind. My mind is blowing up. Like, Oppo Cork 720 down a step up, step down. That's like, 
unreal stuff right there. So all these tricks are technical on their own, but if you really scan through, you can notice that all these big tricks either have an opposite counterpart there or a variation to them. So there really wasn't anything repeated in that run. No, exactly. And I'm just very proud and happy to say that I could, I can at least do one of those tricks on a perfect jump. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I know. Well, you won the Speed and Style just a couple days ago, and I know that Andrew Needling put you on his team. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about right now, go to fantasy.crankworks.com and build your team. There's big prizes up for grabs. One of the grand prizes is a trip to Whistler for Red Bull Joyride. And this is the team that you built, Martin. Walk me through why you made these choices. Yeah, you know, I wanted to go a little bit crazy, you know, because, uh, I mean, first of all, I... Let's see here. <laughs> you went with Paul for only $15,000. Was that because you've been tracking this kid? Yeah, I just know the Frenchies, you know. First of all, in the downhill at the moment, Loic is doing great. And like, Le Mans is killing it. And they have a really strong lineup. I, I feel like France is on fire at the moment. So that's why I picked him. Well, you also think about what riders are going to do well on this particular course. We know it. We've been back here three years in a row. If you're new to watching Cranksworks Innsbruck, let's check out the GoPro course preview. What's up, everyone? Nick Lauragakin here with David Gojek. We're out here in Innsbruck for the Crankworks Innsbruck Slope Style, checking out the course. Yep. Here we are at the first drop. For sure, it's a pretty big drop, but it's tech because you got to land real good because your next jump is the biggest jump on course. Let's go check it out. Yeah. So here we are on the lip of the first big jump. We arrived from the top of the drop, and this jump is absolutely massive. The only dirt-to-dirt -dirt feature yep. on the course. It's pretty sick, no? Yeah, it's pretty massive, but the, the landing, it's uh, super long as well, so it's pretty safety. We've walked to the top of the boner log, the cannon log, whatever you want to call it. You got something mm. crazy planned, or what are you thinking? Mm, <laughs> I'm just going to speed my bike, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll Sounds see. good. Sounds good. Let's move on. Yeah, so the first big hip of the two. It's way more tech than a straight jump, isn't it? Having yeah. it as a hip. It's super fun to ride. A little whip on it. For sure, Steven. It's super nice. Oh, yeah. All right, so as you can see, the landing of this first hip behind us is absolutely massive. It's huge. That's everything. For sure, and you and carry big lip. speed. Yeah, and the second lip, basically, as I'd say it's the same as the, the first one, isn't it? Yeah, it's exactly the same lip. You just go to the right on this hip. But this whale tail right here, also pretty new for, for David as his first crank It works. is. Step down here, yeah. oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, it's so massive. It's huge. Fortunately, the, the lip here is uh, pretty kicky, so it's easy to spin and, and it's uh, comfy. Yeah. Pretty comfortable for how massive it is, so. Uh, Okay, we're up here on the landing of the last Money Booter, one of the sickest finishes to a course, in my opinion. The biggest tricks are gonna be going down here. What do you think, David? Yeah, you can do everything you want here. Uh, the jump is massive and it's super, super fun to ride. So you can send it. Agreed, agreed. This has been the Crankworx Innsbruck Slope Style GoPro Course Preview. Thanks for joining me, David. Yeah, thanks, man. Hell yeah. yeah. Wish us luck. We're gonna be sending it. It's gonna be insane. Yep. So the course is looking real good. And I mean, yesterday was windy. That's why we didn't hold the contest on Saturday. Last night, it poured down rain, but it dried up enough to the point where I actually watched some course officials watering the course this morning. So the wind is low. The dirt is perfect. This is going to be a good one, just like the competition we used to start this season here in Rotorua. Let's take a look at some of this footage, Martin. Here we go. New Zealand is a country known for its culture, but the slope style course at Skyline is famed for its dirt and its flow. Rotorua was supposed to see the return of Sweden's Emil Johansson, who'd been battling a mystery illness all last season. But a crash in practice meant that the 2017 world champion would be watching from the sidelines. Triple Crown winner Nikolai Rogakin brought his trademark level of energy to the mix, but a crash on run one meant the American would need to regroup and refocus. And an uncharacteristic get off on run two would crush his hopes for a repeat of the Triple Crown in 2019. The current level of competition on the Crankworx FMBA Slopestyle World Tour means contenders must unleash their most technical tricks if they're looking to make the podium. For many riders in Rotorua, this spelled disaster. 
With many of the favorites going down in flames, the door was open for an underdog to make his mark. Sweden's Alex Alonko, riding in only his second ever Crankworx Slopestyle Comp, would rise to the occasion and impress the judges, and maybe even himself, with a third place finish. Thomas Lemoyne may be a bit of a multitasker, but the 22-year-old has been upfront about wanting to get back on the slopestyle podium this season. And in New Zealand, the rider known for his smooth, effortless approach to competition would turn his goal into reality. The Frenchman would end the day in second place. Canadian Brett Reader brought a bag full of opposite tricks with him to New Zealand. The amount of technicality that the 2018 Crankworx FNBA Slopestyle World Champion packed into his run in Rotorua meant that he would finish a full six points higher than his closest rival. It's a show of style and competitive savvy that Reader will certainly be looking to repeat at the second stop of the Crankworx World Tour here in Austria. Well, Rotorua was a really tough event for a lot of riders. A lot of riders crashing in their runs, but one rider we didn't see because of a practice crash we're really excited to have back here. For more on that, let's send it down to Michaela Gatto. Okay, so Emil, you've had a massive road to recovery. Huge breakthrough in Whistler, fourth place. Rotorua, unfortunately, you crashed, couldn't compete. Now, you're ready to go, it seems. Yeah, it's it's been a really tough road. I mean, the the rough road didn't really end in Whistler. It just basically it was the end of the beginning. I felt like uh, when when it came to struggles, because when as soon as I got back on the bike, it's yeah, it's uh, I've had a tough time getting back into things, and it's been a long road here. So yeah, I'm I'm psyched to be back. I've unfortunately I crashed in New Zealand, and I crashed once again as soon as I got back riding. So. I'm super pumped to be here and I've, I feel all right, so I'm stoked. Well, we're really excited to see you perform here today. You yeah. look super smooth in practice and I think you've got what it takes. Woo. Thanks, Michaela. Great to see him back. And it's a tough game, man. It's a, it's a very common theme here. Riders making it to the top and then having an injury and falling off. We're looking at our start list right now. A lot of familiar faces out there. Riders like Nikolai Ragakin, Diego Caverzasi, who was slightly injured last year, kind of or first event, just kind of had to take it easy. But we're going to be running this reverse order from our results at stop number one in New Zealand. So we'll be finishing things off with the man on top, Canada's Brett Reader. Now, one name that you can really expect to see on these Crankwork Slope Style start list that's not there today is Thomas Janon. Why? Well, take a look back at this crash he had in Rotorua. Now, it's very rare you see this guy crash. He was going for this opposite 360 tuck no hander. We didn't know until after the event what actually transpired here. It turns out he got such big extension on that no hander, his shoulder went out of the socket. So he was landing with that shoulder dislocated. You know what happens there, your humerus rams into your rib cage. So he got shoulder surgery. And I think with a little bit more of an update on that, we're gonna send it up to the fourth member of our team, Darren Barracloth. Yeah, thanks, Cam. For sure, these guys are throwing down hard. You know, injuries, we always see that a big part of these guys' uh, lives in this sport. And last stop, we had Matt Jones and Diego Carvazzi both go down with some injuries. And Diego ended up taping his shoulder and making his way through, uh, primarily because he thought that he needed to get uh, a solid run down the course just to have points to be able to come to this event and you know that was some serious freaking bravery there to be able to tape up a shoulder which has so much articulating ligaments and whatnot in that portion of the shoulder and uh, absolutely Matt Jones you know he ended up going down with a head injury and it was unfortunate to see but at the end of the day you know Crankworx here we have a, a solid rule with head injuries just because you don't want to mess around with the with the noggin and um, you know sad to say but he didn't ride in the last stop so we be excited to see what he has in store for us today so luckily after all the practice we've had in a tough practice session yesterday with all the wind we didn't have any riders drop out so the riders sitting on the alternate list will have to wait for the next event. Everybody's staying healthy, which means a great show on our hands here in the Crankworks Innsbruck Slope Style. Run number ones are coming up soon. We've set the stage for you. I know you're excited. Don't go away.
Slope style fans of the world, the time has finally come. After a six hour wind delay yesterday, we gave these riders another night's worth of sleep, a big healthy dose of practice this morning, and the time has come. The 14 best slope style riders in the planet taken to the course. This is the Crankworks Innsbruck slope style, and it starts right now. It's on, ladies and gentlemen. Now you hear me talking about the 14 best slope style riders on the planet? Yeah, they would be no other place than this beautiful Alpine city here, Innsbruck, Austria. The winds are lower than yesterday. Check it out, about seven miles per hour. Anything under 10, and it's game time. Temperature, cozy 19 Celsius, six degrees Fahrenheit, mostly cloudy. We'll deal with that, as long as we don't have wind. Martin Soderstrom, here are the riders. Oh, wow. It's going to be a big show. <laughs> Look at that. Starting off big with David Godzik. Oh, my God. I can't wait to see what he have. I mean, we know that he has some of the biggest tricks maybe in the whole star field even. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be a good start to the event. That's for sure. Now, it's not rare to see the Godzik last name on the starting list. Usually we have Simon Godzik, but we're going to be kicking this contest off with younger brother, an X Games dirt gold medalist from Sydney, X Games 2018. That'll be exciting. Anthony Mazzari. A familiar face on tour, making it happen, and then we'll be finishing things off with the guy on top, Brett Reeder. Now the crowd is so psyched to finally get this underway. What will they be watching for? If you're new to slope style, let's explain to the people what our competition format is, Martin Soderstrom. Yeah, so it's uh, two runs. Best round count is the easy way to explain it, and it's not that much harder than that. And we have judges that are so good at judging nowadays that they can separate these guys and uh, figure out who, who's like the best and then all the way down to the to the last rider. A lot on the line here, of course. Big prize money up for grabs for the win here today. Also, the overall Crankworx FNBA Slopestyle World Championship title on the line. But if you win all three Slopestyle events, you win the Triple Crown. Since there's only three stops this year, Brett Reeder is the only one in line for that. If he wins here today, keep himself alive for the finals at Joyride. But it's time to start this competition. On the start tower right now is a fresh face to the Crankworx World Tour, David Godziak. Tell me a couple things about him. Yeah, I actually did a film project together with him back in Sweden. So uh, I know a little bit more than most people about this guy. And first of all, he got an insane training facility, both at his house and here, his brother's house. So this is David Godziak's brother's house, Simon Godziak, who's been a fixture on the World Tour. He's coming back from a torn ACL. But look who's carrying the torch for the Godziak name right here. Little brother, BMX gold medalist, David Godziak. He started on mountain bikes. He transitioned over to BMX. Of course, best in the world if you can win an X Games gold medal. But these two training compounds definitely help. So the first one was Big Bro's place. This is mom and dad's place. They got their grandfather hanging out there, instigating. Not only is he a pro BMXer, a pro mountain biker, he also runs an equipment rental business out of this property right here. So what a well-rounded guy. Interesting fact is, rumor has it, he doesn't follow any other riders on Instagram. That allows him to just focus on his own game, choose his own tricks. We're about ready to find out what those tricks are. What I think is super cool about him is that he has the big tricks and he's got the style. Here we go, Martin. Oh, yes. So we have a 360, starting it off a little bit easier. It's just to oh, yeah. do that. We have the twister on the big dirt-to-dirt -dirt jump. The front court 1080, oh, wow. Man. 
Double whip on the bonal log. Truck driver, 450 on the first hip. Oh, oh yes! Yeah, it's working! <laughs> Cash roll on the second hip. Front flip, no hander, up. Back flip down. Competition. Oh my god, David! How do you do it? BMX, mountain bike, you can do it Gosh. all. Gosh, Martin, we were watching him practice and he was doing a run very similar to that. He packed a little bit more into it when the pressure's on right here. But we were saying, man, don't throw it away, wait for your run. Thank goodness he delivered. Oh my god, I can't even imagine going into that huge dirt jump and like throwing a twister. That was ridiculous. Now, Nikolai Rogakin, we mentioned that he has won this competition the first two years that we had it, so he's undefeated on this course. He's been doing that twister on that same feature, the second jump on the course. Now, the twister, it's a front cork 1080. So he's on a forward axis, so there's one cork in there, but he's spinning two times while on that axis. Check it out, now he drops the shoulder, eyes it up, Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I was a bit surprised that he started off slowly with a 360, but that explains it all. He yep. wanted the speed for the twister. Absolutely. Then my favorite trick, the double whip down the boner. Also a very hard trick to do on a boner log. Martin and here Soderstrom you can see how special. early he's spotting the landing on that catch roll. Look at that. These eyes just right down to that landing. And you know what? We got to savor the moment of this final feature. It was that double backflip. And actually, that's going to give him a lot of points, doing a big banger on that jump, like on top to the cabin. You got to cap it off. Here we go, the double flip. We're going slow-mo. Now, as soon as he finishes that first flip, he eyes it up. Pause the footage. Pause. Look at this. He straightens out his leg. He's eyeing up the landing, and he decides how much time he has left. All right, roll the footage. Now he tucks his legs in. He's waiting to throw his head back. Now that is called air awareness at its finest. He Whoa. loses the foot, did you see that? No, no way! <laughs> but he got it back onto the pedal before he landed. You think you get extra points for that? Oh, you know what, he's not gonna lose any, I know that for sure. <laughs> Let's see what the judges have to say about this run from David Godziak in his first Crankwork slope style appearance. Here we go, the score coming in oh. at 83.5. Wow, okay, <laughs> Rotor rule was tough. It took a while before we had a rider make it through the finish line this really sets the bar for this contest. Yes, that could really be does. like a winning run straight out of the gate. First <laughs> rider to drop. <laughs> Putting the pressure on the rest of the field. The next rider to drop will be Paul Couder out of France. Now, Paul Couder has appeared in one Crankworx slope style before. It was Leger in 2017. He got last place. But look at this, he clawed his way back onto tour and he's looking so good in practice. He's impressing a lot of the other riders in the field. We're all excited to see what he can do with the pressure on here. Big time. This guy got a lot of tricks. So uh, this course will uh, definitely have the op opportunities or like the possibilities to show those big tricks. It's really hard to get on this tour. You gotta fight your way to the top on the lower level events, the FMB World Tours made up of bronze level events, silver, gold, and diamond. These are the diamond events. He's been following those gold events to get those points to make it back here onto the world stage. All right, here we go. Oh, flat drop flip with a can-can. Oh, maybe oh. He lost a little bit. Oh! See, you talked about it in David Godziak's run. You said that's why he chilled out a little bit on the first drop, just doing a 360, because he had a big trick planned for this jump. Do you think perhaps Paul lost a little speed? Maybe he landed a little bit low on that flat flip, one for the can. Let's take a look back Ex at the replay. Exactly. You have to play it smart. That's the thing. Slope style is a bit of a marathon. Like, you have to play it smart. You have to make it all the way down to the finish. Let's see where he landed. A little oh, bit low. Oh, pedaling. Sprinting. Yeah. Wow. That says it right there. He knew he didn't have very oh, much speed. I really hope he's okay. That looked harsh on the ankles. So he was pedaling because he was trying to gain speed, but sometimes in a transition, do you think he might lose speed by, by trying to pedal through those compressions? Exactly. That's uh, always hard. But like when you stress out and you feel like you're landing far down, it's so easy to just get on the pedals because you think you're going to go way faster, but sometimes it's actually better to pump and just tuck. Matt Jones, one of the most exciting 
riders on the tour, also one of the most entertaining guys. He's always got some tricks up his sleeve, and to capitalize on that, we've been setting him up with a microphone and a hidden camera and sending him around the rest of the riders during practice. Take a look at Sherlock Jones. What's up, guys? I'm Sherlock Jones. So our practice here at Innsbruck's been placed on hold because the wind's picked up. So I'm going to use my time wisely and slip under the radar to find out what's really going on. What's up, Paul? I missed the training this morning. What do you mean you missed training? I, I didn't receive the email. Oh, you didn't know it was on? Yeah. Oh, dude. Were you working on your hair farm? What? When did you start farming hair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Is that your knee pads that stink? No. It's not this hot in Sweden. Yeah, it was you. Yeah, the, the gloves. Yeah. I need to wash them, I think. Yeah. I know you have your mic you on. Well, yeah, you know, but it doesn't matter because you've already started talking, so you're going in the live stream, whether you like it or not. They're on to me. Is it obvious? If you know, you know. Are you always riding with music in? Mm, most of the time. Even at home? Yeah, yeah. Sit. Unless, unless like, all the boys are... Yeah. yeah then I won't Height. Like... Do you try and time the big drum and bass drop with when you drop in? Are you, uh, are you, are you guys working together here? I don't know. I've never seen that are guy you guys before. Working? I've never seen him. I'm just, I'm just really intrigued about what you get up to, to be honest. Okay. That's a wrap with Brett. <laughs> Yeah, everyone sussed it. We need to find some newbies, some new faces that aren't as experienced. Emil's young. Do you think we can get Emil? Yo, I heard you bought a house. Apartment. Oh, did you? That's sick. Good work. I'm super pumped. Man. Has it got, like, particularly high ceilings? Did, was it hard for you to find a house with tall enough space? Uh, actually, like, a, a row house, do you call it? Like, it's a long house. Like... Why is it so long? For when you sleep? No. <laughs> Are you gonna ride anymore? I need to. I need to. Look bad. It's not even a one. It's a. It's a. It's a must. Should we just try? No. Look at the trees. If those trees are moving, we're. Oh, Paul called Irks up on the first landing. <laughs> Look at him. Look at his hair in the wind. <laughs> well, there you go. And now you know. That's what's really been going on while the wind blows through here at Innsbruck. You may not see me soon, but that doesn't mean I'm not there. I've been Sherlock Jones. <laughs> oh, I love that. I can watch that all day. <laughs> we will see you soon, Sherlock Jones, because you're in the Star Tower exactly. right now. Exactly. Here you are. Gosh, that guy's funny. Quick, on his toes, man. Exactly. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Matt Jones dropping in for his first of two runs. Flat drop flip. Lance, pretty good. Oh. Uh, yes, good. we got Just the first 360. That's good. Let's see what they have on the cannon. Backflip, no hander. Very stylish. Oh, yeah. Oh. Huge extension. 360 tuck no hander or 270 tuck no hander, actually. Another 360 or 450. Truck driver up. Backflip tuck no hander down. Oh, my. Oh, no. Oh, no. oh, oh my. My. This is like the past. You've got to be kidding no, me. No, no, I Jeez. really hope he's okay. This is what always used to happen to Matt Jones, a perfect run until the last feature. Oh, man, that reminds me of oh, the Eric man. Wynn crash in uh, in Fort William yeah. or whatever it was, just yeah. like that. Choof. Yeah. When the leg gets stuck in the front tire, it just stops. That's always the scariest crashes when you don't know it's going to happen, like you have no time to prepare for it. I mean, that run oh. was so good leading up to that point, and I mean, we used to joke about this because it took him a full season in his first year on tour to get a top to bottom run because time after time you crash on the last jump. Exactly, and we also know that. Oh man, let's go back and savor some of these moments that worked here up until that point. Now my favorite was on the first hip after he made it past this first straightaway here. Now solid, nothing. Nothing crazy on these first two hits, but he was building. Exactly. And it would be nice to have a, like, height meter. All right, wait for it. Pause right now. Oh, look he even looks. All right. His eyes, he was looking up at the ceiling right there just to time out his rotation. But this is what the judges are looking for. Like, big, straight arms. You can do a trick small, roll the footage, or you can do a trick big. And when you do a trick big like that, the judges have room 
even if it's not the biggest trick in the world, even tucking in like that after that to slow down the rotation. If I was a judge, I would really like that. The little things that matter. Now, here's how he finished off this run. Did he? He caught it so early, so it's weird. We hear what happened. What happens? Oh, right. he didn't quite get the pedal. Missing pedals. the pedal there. Oh yeah, watch this front. Ah. I'll bet his leg goes in there. Oh, his knee into the. Oh port. yeah, there it is, yeah. right there. Oh come on. Ooh. That's just the oh. same thing as. Oh, his right shoulder's got to be sore. I mean, that's just the same thing as laying on a front brake right there. Oh man, I Jeez. feel so bad for Matt. It was such a nice, stylish run. Like somehow Did you get rewarded with that. <laughs> that's still got just... a yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. it. Looked like a sniper on the ridge took him out. Ah, oh, what a trooper, man! To have a smile on your face still after that. Hopefully, he's feeling good enough to get back up there for his second run. But we would understand if not. But look who's at the top. Cam, I think you'll have to do the talking now. I'm too, I'm yeah, too this nervous. Yeah, too much for you. You're too close to him. This is the 2017 World Champion. He was absent from last season until the final event. And we talk a lot about him, but let's check out the bike he's riding right now and how he has set this thing up for perfection. This is a Trek Ticket S. He's got some modifications going there. Look at this custom Project One paint job. So creative. Eric Heth painting that thing. He's an artist. Here we go. It looks like we got a little bit of traction grip. Rhino lining on these cranks with all the tail ups that he does. It's a full suspension, slope style bike. About four inches of travel in the rear there. Set up real stiff, just enough to take the edge off. I don't know anyone that is more like careful and sensitive on how he set up, sets up his bike. It's very fun to watch him like got that. work on his bike. Oh yeah, no, he's got that, that way of going about things, right? Precision, even when he rides, you can tell every tiny body movement has been carefully thought out. But he's also dialed enough to where he can improvise. He, I was talking to him this morning during breakfast. He says sometimes in practice, he's just making up his runs on the spot. Going, why did I do that trick? I'm not even planning to do that in my run. He's just enjoying the course. But this guy really has what it takes to knock out Nikolai and Brett, who battled on this course the last two years. Exactly. This is going to be super, very exciting. I can tell all you guys that this guy have a bigger trick bag than you could ever imagine. Here we go. 360 on turn down, down the first flat drop. Mm, oh, no. no. He's going to have to keep going. He's not going to. It's all going to come down to the second run for Emil Johansson. Oh, I wonder if it's the wind, Cam. That's yeah, like... it, might be, it might be headwind on that first straightaway, huh? That would be a bummer if you were like lucky or unlucky with the wind on the first straightaway. It looks like the wind is blowing that way. Yeah, let's take a look back. I don't know if we can pick up on any cues on the footage, looking at which direction any flags are rolling. Let's see if he landed high enough to have the speed. I mean, perfect landing, perfect got landing. pumped. He even got a pedal. Yeah, it's gotta be a headwind. Yeah. Yeah, you can see there was that moment where he looked stalled out. I think the wind is blowing right Dude, at I their face. His rear wheel is gonna be fine after that. Seriously. So Emil Johansson makes his way back up to the start of the course for his second run. He'll have to wait until we get through the entire field in their first runs. And look, now we focus our attention on the Italian rider who came out so strong last year, Diego Caverzassi. He's usually front flipping that first jump, so that could be a good technique in the wind to really push all your weight forward. So this guy was on the podium a lot last season, and we were thinking maybe he could win. We've been waiting for a European to win a Crankworx slope style stop since 2012. This is the last guy who did it, Thomas Janon. Hey, Martin, we shared the podium with him that year. It's been that long. Yeah, long. <laughs> now we have 11 Europeans in the field here today, three North Americans. So if you're just talking percentage and probability, there's a good chance a European would win. Could that European beat Diego Caverzassi? You also now wonder if uh, the riders are planning this to go a little bit easier on the drop to carry speed for the big jump. Uh, for the big jump. Yeah, now that they're seeing what's going on with the other riders, you think they might be amending their plans. Diego stood on the podium here last year, third place. Looking to do it again. Dropping in, Diego Caverzassi. Here we go. 360X up down the first one. It, it looks like he landed perfect. Oh, good call. No. Oh, no! I was thinking a front flip's a great choice there because the way Diego does front flips, he typically extends his distance. It looked like he came up a tiny bit short and his flip blew off. Oh, is he okay? 
You know, he was dealing with that wrist at stop number one. Uh, it looks like or he's was holding it up. Before, but he had a wrist issue last year. He's always battling something. Uh, Such a hard working rider. He works at a bike shop to support himself. He's been picking up sponsors as he's been climbing the ranks, getting on these podiums. But man, see him holding that wrist. I hope he's all right. Exactly. Well, let's check it let's out again. See here. It's, it's weird because it looks like he lands perfectly there. And he was front flipping. And he put, took a pedal. Yeah. Front foot bar spin. Barely too short, by like three inches. Yeah, exactly. Oh, watch that wrist get jammed. His right wrist, when uh, all of his momentum stopped, it just jammed. Yeah, that's going to be have to be their plan now to make it through that first jump so they can do really, really big tricks on the rest of the course or just hope that the win is like playing in their favor. I really think you're right about that is kind of looking at what's going on. And if you're a rider in the start gate, like our next rider here, Jakob Wenzel, you got to be thinking what tricks are in my bag that will give me a little bit more distance. Now, I know on that first jump in practice, he was doing some variations that do push you a little bit further. So hopefully he sticks with his plan here. Now that just goes to show, that's crazy right there. Oldest rider in the competition hasn't cracked 30 even. Oldest rider still in his 20s. But man, has he ever been killing it recently? He was the dual speed and style world champion on a year that he fell off tour, but he's back on tour and hungry as ever. Yes, Jakob. All right, first flat drop, 360X up, playing it smart. Yeah. Here we have the cash roll pushing forward. Oh, perfect, perfect landing. Yes, that made me so happy. <laughs> Yes, flat drop flip, or uh, yeah, cannon flip. 270, big no-hander. As nice as Matt Jones. Yep. Oh, yeah. 720, this is a good run. 360 on turn down, up. Backflip X up, down. Yes, everything perfect. Oh, oh. yeah, come on! Oh, <laughs> yes. Yasser finishing that run off with a double backflip. I mean, that's exactly what he needed to do. This guy has worked so hard to get back on tour and to stay on tour. He had a big crash at the end of practice, blowing out his tire, but he was all right. Thank goodness he put that run down. I thought he was throwing it away on that last jump. You could tell here, perfect 360X up, landing good, pumping, no pedaling. I think that could be a good key. Oh, and look at this. Man, ah, it was perfect. He loves calling his cash rolls. The Rodeo 7, so and we'll here give we him talked that. about the dis extension before. That's what you want. I mean, that was just like Matt Jones. Huge extension. Exactly. 270, landing very good. And then he actually had to overspin this 720. I don't know what... What's I, that? I'm not that good at math, Cam. What's let's, that? Let's 800. call it a 760. <laughs> 760. 760. Look at Look that. Staring down at the landing the whole Look. time. You know, these riders, when they're in the middle of these rotations, they can speed up, they can slow down if they know where they are. And right here, on That's the final few features, check out this double flip. I mean, he stares down and thinks, oh boy, I might be a little bit short. I might be a little bit light on rotation. His head was so close to the ground. Gosh, uh. squeaking it out. That's a very good ending, though, because judges are going to remember a big trick in the end. All right, waiting for the score here from Jakob Wenzel a 77.75. I'm thinking about how many riders had throwaways. This is kind of reminiscent of Rotorua, despite starting out so strong with that run from David Godziak, which scored him an 83.5. These scores, of course, being decided by our esteemed panel of judges, Paul Rack, Hank, Jeff Golovich, Chopper, Fielder, I feel like I really trust those guys that are sitting there. So that Here, feels Edward good. Ferry. Yep, they've been doing it a long time. And they've judged this guy many times in the past. They've given him two wins the last two years here. He's known as the king of Innsbruck when it comes to slope style. He was the first guy to win the triple crown of slope style last year. And he looks focused. Undefeated here in Innsbruck on this course. The course has remained unchanged for the last three years. So you know this is his favorite on the tour. And he's been taking some of those tricks that he's used the last two years and applying them to different features. But we still got question marks. What's it gonna be? Flat drop Taylor. Oh, no, 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 no. No! Oh. oh, the base jumper. Jeez. Oh, he's running. Oh my gosh, he's gonna, he knows so many people messed their runs up. 
Exactly. And he can still sell some points instead of just waiting for a second run. He's going to drop in from here. And the difference with Nikolai Rivetkin as well <laughs> is that he's doing it for the crowd. Yep. He loves this. And they love him. Oh, oh, oh no. no! No, no, oh, no, no. Wow. I really hope that he's OK. Yeah. Nikolai. Oh, we don't like to see that. Oh. Wow, so we're going to get our medical staff to attend to Nikolai Rogakin right now. Now, this guy just lives for the energy that comes from that crowd. We wanted to put on a show for them right here. Luckily, we have the best medical staff here. And that is the hardest thing ever. When you're full of adrenaline after a crash, maybe you pedal a little bit harder, and we could tell that he was going far on that cannon. Now, that move that he was doing is such a big move right now. We know that he did it in practice. We we're hoping we might see it in the run. Cash roll off of a cannon. You see that on jumps. You don't typically see it on that feature. Man, going that far, that's like jumping off a building landing on your chest. That was a big crash. All right, well, while our medical staff attends to Nikolai Ragakin, well, uh -oh, is is of course he is. Of course he's, he's back up. up. Dude, so it, many times we've seen him do this, haven't we? Exactly, the rampage crash when he just toss himself off, keeps on riding. This guy is a machine. Oh, it's so great to see Nikolai Ragakin up and at them. We've seen him do this so many times. He is as tough as nails. But let's take a look at the leaderboard. He's not going to shoot to the top like we would expect him to. But our current leader right now is David Godziak because he did all this. Dude, how impressive is that now when we see that the wind was yeah. actually pretty bad, like to land a twister on the first jump? David like, is a big dude. You know, if he puts his tires down to the right spot, he carries a lot of momentum. Yeah, it does. It just goes to show how tough riding in these conditions can be right now. And that <laughs> makes this run even more impressive. Exactly. And then our favorite part of the run almost, the double flip. It yeah. just looks Watch so him controlled. Stall this out. The air awareness. Oh, I'm going to over rotate. I better straighten my legs. <laughs> so cool. Oh, my God. When you see rotations like that, you start to feel like soon we're going to see triple flips. Jeez. OK, well, that scored him an 83.5. And to hear more from David Godzik, let's send it up to Darren Bearcloth. Yeah, folks, these guys are throwing down hard. And uh, thankfully, Nikolai got back up. And he's going to hopefully come back for another round. But I'm standing here with the man here that's sitting in the first place, had an insanely good first run. Tell me a little bit about how it feels to have your first debut, stomp your first run, and still have a second one to come back for more. Uh, it feels perfect. I just uh, did my save run as it was planned. It worked. Uh, there was a few little mistakes uh, I want to improve, uh, so I'm going to do it in the second run. Damn, this guy wants to improve on that first run. So tell me, give me a little bit of a tidbit on what you're uh, thinking for the next run. What you got? A uh, few more bar spins, a few more maybe no-handers, and some additional tricks that are uh, going to um, be better. Sounds good, bud. Well, we'll all be looking for you in the final run. All the best to you, my son. Cheers. Back to you, Cam. Come on. you got to be kidding me. Drink. He says he's got more in the tank right there. And then me and Martin, we're doing charades over here <laughs> off camera, trying to guess what he's going to add in. We have some suspicions. We'll have to wait until his run to see what he does. But right now, it's all about this guy. And this is interesting right here, because we're seeing a lot of riders crash in their first run. And we hope they'll get back up to the start and stomp their runs, because that's exactly what can happen. That's exactly what Eric Fedko did just a year ago. Check it out. He was pretty unknown on tour at this point. But he's bringing tricks like this 360 Superman secret up. Indian Air crashing in run number one. Now, like the Hulk, ripping his shirt off, checking himself out, making sure he's good, and getting right back up to the top for Spitting run number out the two. <laughs> the teeth. And guess what? Not shying away. Dropping in despite hitting the ground so hard, but being smart about it as well. This is before he had been getting on that podium, so we didn't realize what kind of fortitude he had but he was smart, choosing tricks that would work, knowing that he only had one more opportunity to get a score. He ended up finishing that day in fifth place. He would go on to end the season with another two great results, two third places <laughs> for Eric Fedko. His tire popping off the rim at the bottom. And about all of this excitement, he had this to say. 
Now, people think he's really serious, and he's aware of this, but he views himself as pretty chill. He wants to win, and he's willing to put everything into that goal at the end of the day. He practices really hard. He's picked up some more sponsors since last season, of course. Two podiums in a season will do that for a young rider. Watching him in practice. I have a feeling we're going to see that trick again that he crashed on last year. He's taken the time to improve that. He learned a ton more stuff as well. The crowd getting behind this young German rider right now, Eric Fedko. Yeah, one of many young guns. And what I really like about Eric is his style. He's uh, not just doing all the big tricks. He's also putting in some, like, as we could see there, the 360 Super Seat Indian. All right, here we go. First flat drop. Truck driver, 360 bar spin. Little pedal there. Back yes. foot, double bar spin, yes. Okay, the hardest part is over. Cannon, 360 tail whip. Oh yeah. my god, that's so perfect. <laughs> <gasps> oh, truck to tail whip. We caught so early. Oh. Okay, but yeah, we're still going. We're still going. Messed up a little bit there, but here's a 360 downside whip up. Back flip, tuck no handler. Perfect. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Back flip, Superman seat grab. I think he's the only rider that we see do that on contests nowadays. I love very, it. very cool. I love it. Eric Fedko, one of my favorite riders to watch out here because of those tricks he chooses and the way he's able to execute them. Smart rider as well, choosing tricks that will push through a difficult section to clear. How cool was that 450 bar spin oh my to God. tail whip? He caught Perfect. so early. So early. He's going to be. All right, let's take a look back. And you know what? I'm glad. Watch him push yeah. through on the lip of this second feature here. Oh, Watch him, his eyes up, push pedal. forward. Yep. Back foot, double bar spin. And look at this. Absolutely perfect three whip. Huge points. Downer bone log, and that what took, uh, what may, uh, what got Nikolai into first last year. Watch how early he catches these pedals. Oh, he could have fit in another bar spin there. On, the landing wasn't even in frame yet, he was already on the pedal. <laughs> yeah. So here's, this where, is the here's only. where he could improve next time. Now, I'm gonna have you pause it at this point where he wanted full extension. Ready, pause. He wants his legs to be up here and up here. Now, a lot of room for improvement. Roll the footage because we know that when he does get full extension on this, his legs are not only horizontal, they go closer to vertical. And whatever this score is, you know that he's got room for improvement. But then he took some points back here because exactly. 360 downside whip up onto that is very hard and will get scored high. And great extension on the backflip no under down also carrying good speed for the last trick jump. And here we go, let's pause it again. Ready, set, pause. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, almost. But yeah. when he was at full <laughs> extension, he was right about, yeah, there we go, there we go. Oh and what you're looking for God. there is anywhere from here to here in this range right here is big points right there and knees That's without taken. abandoning them taken straight out of the textbook. That's love how it. I would love to do that trick. You know what I also like about this run is the fact that, yeah, maybe he messed up extension a little bit on that 360 seat grab Indian Air, but he kept pushing forward and salvage. Where is he gonna go? How high will this score climb? Oh. Into second place in 80.5. Three points lower than your current leader, David Godziak. Look at this consistent rider out of Germany. He's gonna be happy with that because he also knows that he can improve that run. And that was a solid score. He finished the season last year, the last two events on the podium in third place. So he's carrying that momentum right into the 2019 season. Now this guy, he may not be massive in stature, but he's known for going so high above the lip. That's how he carved a path for himself. All the criteria that the judges have on this, on their scorecards, Amplitude is one of them. That's what he uses. Now to give a little scale on how big these features are here, we've got a special little fun way of doing this. So this is the whale tail feature. It's 11 and a half meters, or as we measure things here in Austria, we use a little bit different unit of measurement. We say it's about three Alpine skis plus five beer steins and three schnitzels long, <laughs> or also known as 175 Anthony Miseries. So 
One of the courses in the history of slope style that is proven to break down barriers. Now, Anthony Vizzeri looking for a big score here. Flat drop tail whip. Perfect, push. Oh, yeah! Oh, wow. That's smart. the trick to do in the wind. So That's smart. the trick, long guard front flip. Cannon, truck driver. So smart. Oh, so, come on. Yeah. Oh, keep it going, uh, Anthony. Oh. What? That was so smart, that was so smart. <laughs> flip whip into front flip, opposite 360 up, back flip bar spin down. Let's see what he got here. Back yeah. flip, the, no! Oh, they're struggling with that flip whip on the last jump. We saw Matt Jones do it earlier, now Anthony, ouch. So brutal to see. A great run get derailed on the final feature is such a bummer, especially for this kid too, because he's been on tour for so long. He got in today from the alternate list, which is crazy to think, because he's been a mainstay on the world tour since 2011. This guy have experience for sure. I remember when he got onto the scene when he was 15. Oh, that's extension and perfect. <laughs> so smart in the wind. Were you worried he was gonna over rotate for a second? Yep, very much so. And this, how did he hold on? The amount of time, oh we're gonna get God. to watch this can, in slow We motion. can see there that <laughs> he... Crank spun, he usually spun rides... a little bit, and then he's like, oh, he I'm right really before. gonna try. So let's see what he does. Does he get half a crank in before he front flips? Let's see, where does he take off? <sighs> yeah, right foot forward, magically, when he comes out of the Man, barrel. I wonder <laughs> if he planned that front flip. If he didn't plan that front flip, he's a genius. I love improvisational riding, and when you've been a rider on tour for so long, like Anthony Missouri... And look how far down he landed. <laughs> Gosh, he's good at carrying speed. This is the type of run smart. that can only be done by a very experienced rider. And then maybe here he was like, okay, I saved it, good. Now I'm at the bottom and maybe relaxed a little bit here. Oh, you can see there again. He, he spun the, the cranks again. So I don't know what... He's usually... He's usually oh. doing flip whips unlock like all day every day but it looks like he changed up his technique a little bit and kicks his cranks a little bit so yeah they're I like, know I think they're flipping like you know that, 90 that company trick stuff out of Germany they got this new thing called the no-go where you can actually tighten up your cranks without having to use like oh, ghetto yes. tubes and stuff like that he needs one okay fourth place right now for Anthony Missouri gosh good to see him with a smile on his face after that big crash same as Matt Jones Let's take a look at our leaderboard, Martin Soderstrom. Man, I wonder how David feels at the moment. He's like had so many strong riders dropping in and he's still sitting <laughs> in first. That must feel very, very good. Well, he knows what it's like to win a huge event. He's won X Games Dirt in Sydney 2018. Can he hold on for the win here? He's gonna have to dodge a lot of bullets. The next one in the chamber right now. Can Germany's you see his helmet? Lucas Knopf. Can you see his helmet, Cam? That's a Martin Soderstrom edition. Hey! So I'm happy to see that. <laughs> Love it. Representing. Thank you, Lucas. It means a lot. Okay, Lucas Knopf on course. Flat, drop, truck driver, 360 bar spin. Front flip, maybe he watched Anthony. That's a very good trick to do on that jump to carry speed. Oh, oh boy. Very good double truck down the cannon. Oh yeah. Bar spin to tail whip. That's a trick that you and me like. I love Cam. it. Love it. Oh. Ooh, 450 improv. late bar spin. Back to bar spin up. Truck driver down. Yes, take this home, Lucas. Here we go. One last feature. Back oh. to tail to bar spin. Oh, <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. You Maybe. called it out in practice. You said yeah. those flip whips are looking really good. He could fit in a bar spin. But I was scared when I saw him come off the lip because, I mean, we're, we're traumatized after watching Matt Jones and Anthony Missouri crash flip whips on the last jump. But Lucas Knopf not only landed it, adding a bar spin. This was very cool. And I know that maybe he wanted to go for a front flip no-hander there, but he played it smart in the wind, and that's the way you have to do. Well, it's not the only time he improved in this run. Now we had this Oh, we beautiful... like this to down whip. Yeah. Boom. Doing it on the hip makes it look so good. Oh, man. But this next and jump, check it out. He was planning to take the hands off. They didn't come off, but he still snuck that bar spin in. Exactly. And here is the highlight of the whole run. Catching those pedals very early. And he realized, Trouble. oh, I got time for a bar spin Jeez. as well. I've never done a flip whip and felt, oh, I have time for a bar spin as well. <laughs> I'm like, good, my feet are on the pedals. Let's <laughs> exactly. just keep it that way. Let's not complicate things. <laughs> so, first place score to beat 83.5. Held by the man, David Godziak. Mm -hmm. They're gonna... They're gonna hold their breath now. 
because that was a very good run. I mean, Eric Fedko is sitting in second now, so uh, let's see here. Can he move into podium position right now? He would need to beat a 77.75 to move into third. He would need to beat 83.5 to take the lead. The judges doing their job. They've been sitting around. They're ready to start putting some notes on paper. All right, wait for it. Here we go. Lucas Knopf into fourth place with a 75. So he slides right ahead of Anthony Missouri. So what that tells me right now is with all these riders crashing, there is so much ground to be made up to just get a top to bottom run. Now that was a really good run, but he figured even if you just cross the finish line, you're gonna slot into that fifth spot. Oh yeah, he's gonna be happy with that. Next Italian. Next Italian in the gate, Torquato Testa. A rider who has tasted blood in the past, who has fallen off tour in the past, but who has proven his worth and clawed his way back. And he is looking so strong. Let's see him put one together. Yes, 360 bar spin down the first one. Good start. Backflip no-hander, also playing it smart at the start. Probably gonna throw in some bigger things down here. Yes. Yes, backflip no foot can. I've never seen anyone else do that off the boner log. Double <laughs> tail whip downside on the first one. Backflip no-hander. Double truck driver up. Yeah. Oh, another backflip no foot can down the step up. Step down. down. Lock. Oh, boy. Oh, that's so slow. <laughs> oh, did you see that? Oh, it's like, oh think. no, the landing is there. No. Oh. I did not think he was going to squeeze that around at the last second. This is going to be a run that will absolutely shake up the leaderboard. Anthony Missouri is sitting in fifth place right now with a 52.25. He had a crash, so there's a lot of space between fifth and fourth here. But you can tell that the riders who've been on the scene for a while, they know, they're playing it smart. He did a flip no-hander, which is not his hardest trick, but he just wanted to get to the finish line. Now, he's the only guy, you mentioned it, who's doing that backflip no-footed can-can. He did it on two step-downs here, on the cannon log and out of the whale tail. Now, what do you think? Do you think the judges will dock him for repeating, or do you think he'll get credit for that because he's the only one doing it? Uh, good question, Cam. It's, um, I mean, all judges are different, so we will just have to see. Here we go, look at the extension. Now, it's a great one, too. You That's see backflip one-footed cans a lot, but taking both feet off means way more points. It's very cool of Torquato to bring that trick back onto the scene, because we haven't seen it in a long time. Oh, and that was so slow, and then he was like, oh, landing, yeah. let's go. <laughs> now, he does those both ways. That was his natural direction right there, and I really like the axis it was on. It wasn't so standard. It was a little less flippy. Exactly. I think it looked really good. All right, where will this score put Torquato Testa? The judges hard at work. A lot of room here between that fifth place, that fourth place. If he wants to slot into podium position, he's gonna need to beat the 77.75. He's gonna lose a lot of points doing that backflip no-hander on the, on the first big jump. Yep. Because I know they judged the, the big jump high. So we will see here. Yep. There it is, a 71, good enough for fifth position right now for the Italian. But he's playing it smart. He knows it's important to get those points. He's been and, here before, man. And also for the second run to stay healthy and step it up. Uh-oh. You know he's got more in the tank, too. But check this out. You know him. I remember meeting this guy in Sweden at an indoor skate park. He said he wants to make it to the Crankworks World Tour. He made it to one event last year, and he wasn't happy with his performance. So he practiced all offseason, and he came to the first stop, and he did this. Yeah, same thing with Alex. I've been riding a lot with him this winter, and this guy is dedicated. I'm usually going to the indoor park and riding like two, three hours, and then I'm done. And that's just the first session for him. Then he's there for like another four or five hours practicing. So he really deserved this third place in Rotorua. Hard work paid off. He wasn't happy with showing up, getting last year, last year. He went, I know I can do more than this. So. He's third in the world right now for the 2019 season. Well-deserved. Can he carry the momentum? And this is a smart guy as well. I think he's gonna play it smart. We saw it in Rotorua. He had a good run in the first run. Then he played it smart in the second one, one to uh, basically save himself for the future. So the here we go, for Alex, Alex Alonco. Alonco. 360 can-can down the flat drop. That's the first, oh. Ooh, that's gonna hurt, but there's a lot of room. A lot of people didn't even cross the finish line. Good, he's still going. Yep, truck driver down the cannon, boner log. 
a little uh, 450 opposite. opposite. Oh. oh, perfect cork 720 or 760 as Cam calls them. <laughs> 360 down the step down. And a backflip, Barsman to finish things off. So, visibly frustrated by missing a trick on the second feature, but I really respect the fact that he carried on. There's nothing that bugs me more than watching a rider just throw a runaway, knowing that these points are so valuable. It's so often that you see a rider fall off tour. You know, instead of getting last, you could do a run that maybe isn't your dream run, but get some points and show up to the next event. It's also very hard to move into an event with a completely different approach. It's going to be like at the last event, he had no pressure. No one knew who he, who he was. And this time, OK, here we go. Sixth place. Not going to be happy with that, but he's got another run. So we will send Alex Alonco back up to the top. But if you're just joining us, our current leader in his first Crankworks slope style appearance, brother of Simon Godziak, and a gold medalist at X Games Dirt. This is David Godziak. He was the first rider to drop, and he's been untouchable ever since. How can you not get dizzy after all these rotations? It would be fun to count the degrees of rotation that he did in that run. <laughs> totally. Well, there's 360 more. Oh, exactly. Oh, oh, yeah, next feature. Oh, there's 360 more. <laughs> oh, and wait for it. How did he stop this run? The best double flip I've ever seen. There's yes. 720 more. <laughs> What a great run from David Godziak. And how he lost his foot, still managed still to get it back. Yeah. What's up? Oh, my God. So that means we're getting into our top two riders here. Now, when we're talking about this guy, you always hear us mention King of Crankworks overall standings because he's the man at the top of the leaderboard there. What is the King of Crankworks? Well, we've got three stops on this world tour. We kick it off in New Zealand. We're here in Austria now, and then we finish it all off where it all began in Whistler, British Columbia. Tons of different disciplines. You can sign up for as many or as few as you want. But if you rank in these disciplines, you collect points. We'll do the same thing we we're doing with the David Godzik's degrees of rotation. We'll add up those points, and the rider with the most points at the end of the year will take home $25,000. Sam Blankensop was the king. He's wearing the crown rolling into this season. Jill Kinner was the queen. She got a crown of her own. But who will take it this year? The man who's leading the charge right now is Thomas Lemoyne. He's about ready to drop in for slope style, but his week started long ago. This is what he did in speed and style. Notice his handlebars are backwards. But look, he's got the eye of the tiger. Doesn't even flinch, continues his whole run. Now this is a race here. He's only got one brake on his bike as it is. Against one of the fastest riders in the, on the planet. <laughs> Which is so true. Hey, look at this. He was so frustrated where most people would just be so impressed with their ability to ride with their handbars backwards. But you know what? He picked, some, picked up some points in that speed and style. He also picked up some points in pump track. He's looking to extend his lead now as he drops in for his slope style run. This is his main event. And here he goes. First run of two for Thomas Lemoyne. 360 bar spin down the first flat drop. Perfectly. Oh, oh yes. Backflip no hander, okay. two bar spin. They're not backwards. <laughs> 360 on turn down, down the cannon. Perfect he is extension. smart. Yes. Oh, 360 tuck no hander to bar spin. Opposite oh, tuck no hander. Oh, this is a good run from top to bottom. Huge front flip up. Oh, oh, oh snapping no. outside of his comfort zone. Oh, is his tire oh, okay? <laughs> oh my god, how does he do that? It's like riding with your bar backwards. He lands like it has such a hard landing and he just keeps pushing. That's how hard he wants that oh. overall backwards title. Tom oh. Oh, oh yeah, meanwhile Brett Reader's on Snapchat or something. <laughs> He's taking his mind oh off of the God. hammer that was just dropped How by the French rider that? Thomas Lemoyne. Gosh. You would think that, okay. He didn't miss anything. I want to know how he gauges that run. So let's hear from him. Let's send it down to Michaela Gatto. All right, so how's your back tire? Uh, should be good. <laughs> and we've had a bit of a up and down runs from the riders previous to you. You're one of the last guys to come down. How relieved are you feeling right now? I'm pretty stoked. I was kind of scared about the first part because I saw everyone struggling in the lip, 
I was gonna do another trick and I thought I will not have the speed, so I changed like in half a second maybe. Yeah, that's cool, I made it. Yeah, so you made some last minute changes because of the win. Uh, last uh, half second change, <laughs> yeah. Well, it seemed to work out for you. That was an amazing run. You came down clean and you still have a little bit more for the round two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, my. Now, this is the type of run that I could watch in slow-mo all day. Watch his eyes. He looks over at the crowd on this one. What's up, people? <laughs> and that's opposite with that much extension. And he's Very already cool. complimented because he did the regular version of that trick with a bar spin. So when he's doing it regular, he's adding a variation. When he's doing it opposite, he has great extension. What will the score be for Thomas Lemoyne? Here we go. 81.75 into second place. Oh, oh wow. geez. We he's got a tight <laughs> top over there. Oh, oh one my for God. sure. He's going to take home some more points. So if you're the other guys in the running for King of Crankworks, you just watched that and went, uh-oh. David Godziak still leading the charge here with an 83.5. Thomas Lemoyne slides into second place, 81.75. Close behind him is the young German rider who had two third place finishes last year, Eric Fedko. You also have to remember that Thomas doesn't get as much practice on the slopes, of course, oh. because he's practicing pump track. He's pump practicing speed of style. He's doing it all. Thanks for bringing that up because that is a really good point. Well, we got one more rider to drop here in our first run of two in this slope style competition. This is the man to beat. And we got inside his head, we got to interview him, take a look at what he had to say. If I was thinking the same way that I was last year, when I was like, I need to win this contest, I'm going to win this contest, I can win this contest, there's no reason I can't win this contest. If I kept that going, like, it's so hard to win a contest, like, there's like way too many elements. Even if you do have the best riding out of everyone, like you could be like off, like you could just wake up on the wrong side of the bed and like, there it is. There's like the reason why you didn't win or someone could say something to you and that fucks you up and you can't, you know, you just like, it's like a, a wall that you can't get past. Well, Brett Reader stronger than ever mentally right now. He's woken up the past two mornings thinking that he's going to drop in for his run. But finally, the moment is here. He has watched 13 of his peers drop in. He knows what the score to beat is. He knows he has what it takes to beat that score. It all comes down to putting it on the line this very moment. Oh! Oh, yes. and he's dropping in with the flat drop flip with one of the hardest yes. tricks ever. Front flip, bar flip on the big jump. Whoa. Back flip, opposite tail whip down the cannon. Opposite cork 720 on the first hip, regular cork 720 on the second <laughs> hip. <laughs> 360 down whip up. Upper truck driver yep, down. Yep. Oh, he's holding One on. Last feature. Back flip opposite tail up straight to the pedals. <laughs> oh, that's so impressive to hold that together oh, in man. the wind. And like he watched all the other guys struggle on the first straight, and he's dropping in with a backflip. Tail whip, no oh, compromise. No compromise. We are going to have to go back to these replays and we're going to have to focus on that third feature. But first, let's savor this flat drop backflip tail up. We have to say he's the only rider who does that trick in the world. And he almost under rotated this front flip here, you see, manualing it out on the back tire. But here we go. Let's figure out if this was regular or opposite. He's kicking with his left. That is a backflip opposite tail whip. So that's huge, God. that is huge. And dude, he had many hard landings and he's still just like looking at the next jump and you going big on that one as well. You opposite know that 720 there. Brett Reader will never repeat a trick unless it's an opposite version or there's a variation or he's doing it on a completely different feature. So you knew that backflip tail had to be opposite. You called it right off the get go. It's so weird how this is the easiest part of his run. Yeah, that is insane. A regular cork 760. Yeah, on a hip. But look, he connects perfectly. Uh, There's no sliding of those tires. And this is super tires. cool to see nowadays as well, that this is us was usually just called a setup jump to get on top and to have a step down. But now they do big tricks also on the step ups. Super the technicality cool. Technicality there, spinning two different directions, up yeah. and down here, opposite an opposite truck, truck driver. driver. And the crazy thing is here on this last jump, you know he's got more in the tank, but... Playing it smart. 
Now, score to be 83.50, currently held by David Godziak. Martin, what do you think? Dude, he definitely didn't uh, wake up on the wrong side of the bed today. That was an uh, insanely cool run. The technicality of this run, does it have what it takes to knock out the big tricks of David Godziak? We're about to find out. Watch I this think climb. So. You have a new <laughs> leader, Brett Reeder, 92 slides into first place. Let's throw it down to Michaela Gatto. All right, so we were just sat here watching the replay. You said your legs were shaking. Take me through that run. Yeah, I, I, I didn't practice that flat drop flip whip in practice, and obviously super nervous because I haven't done one in a while. And uh, I also didn't practice the backflip opposite tail up on the boner log. And um, <laughs> I, almost, I almost crashed on it, but I, I held it together and, and made it down to the bottom. So uh, yeah. My legs are shaking right now, and I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm nervous. Do you usually um, improvise during your run, or are you more of a pre-planned guy? Uh, I'm usually a pre-planned guy, but there was, a, there was a bit of a compromise at the end there. But um, yeah, we'll see. The course is running so much slower than it was. Uh, like as you can see, lots of the riders were casing at the top. Uh, we're dealing with a wind here again in the finals, and. Uh, I got lucky on that one. Well, the good thing is you have another round to make improvements, and it sounds like you've got some room to grow. So congrats on moving into that top spot, and we're excited to see you round two. OK, thank you. Yes, good insight Ooh. there, Michaela. Great to hear from him, you know, just how tough that run was, knowing that he didn't do two of those elements in practice. I mean, that's the way it used to be, but, but usually these guys practice everything, but when the tricks are so hard, you save something for the finals. Exactly. Now, you have to like put together so many different tricks nowadays that you can't really just do all of them first time. Well, Brett Reeder showing that he has what it takes to move into the lead. Crankworks in for a slope style. Welcome back to the Alpine urban city of Innsbruck, Austria. You just watched run one of two of the Crankworks Innsbruck Slope Style, and what a show it was. I'm your host, Cam McCall, alongside our analyst today, Martin Soderstrom. We even got our field reporter, the legend, Darren Bearcloth, up in the booth right now. We have this opportunity to start dissecting these first runs. But first of all, I want to give you a little bit more insight into where we are right now and how much mountain biking can be done here, all different types of riding. Allow Peter Kaiser to take you on a tour of Innsbruck. Take a look. Welcome, we're here in Innsbruck at our new dirt jump spot. So basically in Innsbruck we have a big BMX scene and the crew is around for quite some time now and they kind of got things going with that place here and yeah the city gave us that property and we've been here for like two years now and yeah things starting to shape up and are running great now so it's good fun. I mean it definitely makes for a good training facility here and the dirt park here is kind of just a good place to come together like all the students who are like riding and all the BMX guys we're just summing up here and having a great time. Basically Innsbruck is located right in the middle of the mountains, the Austrian Alps and what makes Innsbruck so special is basically the variety of things you can do here. You could like grab your enduro in the morning, go for some morning laps, ride the bike park on the DH in the afternoon basically and still have like an evening dirt jump session out here. Combine every type of riding in one day and still make it like a chill day because it's all so close together and it still is quite a big city where you could like have other activities as well. Crankworks for Innsbruck was like a good start to get like the community going and like the whole bike scene going at some point. There has been like a big scene before but it still was a kind of a kickstart to get traders built, get other projects going, get people involved in general. There's definitely lots of potential here so come here and have fun I guess. So no wonder all the riders enjoy coming out here to Innsbruck, Austria. You got a gondola to take you up to the top of the mountain. There's dirt jumps. Of course, there's a Crankworks Festival. Now, we're being joined in the booth now by Darren Bearcloth. Darren, we got to go up that gondola, do a little bit of riding two days ago. That was yeah, good. Yeah, we did. 
Thanks for the invite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, bud. Next time. We shouldn't. We shouldn't have said anything. Yeah. Now he feels all left out. But man, what an insane first of two runs, huh, Darren? Yeah. What a crazy show that we've been seeing. All the riders having struggles on that first jump. You know, we all saw that the uh, the course is running a little slow just from the rain last night and a bit of a head crosswind on that first jump. So you saw that a lot of the riders opting for the front flips, which is definitely helping. And it's surprising that Reader rode out on his back tire, which was pretty amazing. And then on the flip side, we got freaking Nikolai. That looks like he got a bit of a, a head ringer. Man, I am so glad to see him pop up, but only time will tell if he's in condition enough to to ride i mean always a tough game for these guys to be able to push through these injuries one rider that's been absent for so long and he didn't he wasn't able to ride rotorua that was emil he had struggles in run one as well absolutely yeah he uh, messed up on the uh, cannon log i believe it was an oppo three whip that he uh messed up on which took him out correct in Rot rotorua yeah yeah that's last stop correct. so I'm curious if he's going to go uh, get redemption on that trick, on that same feature. Yeah, it's it's great to see him back, and I hope he's able to get a run in the bag in second runs. But if you don't know the backstory on why he was gone all last season, well, there's a lot of information. For a little tease on that, take a look. Emil Johansson, the future is now. I bet he'll be the next unstoppable dude in the, in the circuit. Yeah. Leading the FMB World Tour, he's at the biggest event of the year, and it doesn't seem to face him. He was the champion. He had to confess that he's not able to follow this career anymore. My world got so flipped upside down, upside down, upside down, upside down. This is something that reached way beyond just my back. The whole system breaks down. And severe problems coming up. There were no explanation. I just felt shittier and shittier. Maybe we can do something other than biking. So he burst onto the scene, he made it look easy, and then he's been struggling so much with health. But now it's crazy to think there's so much on the line with this second run here because he's in he's in danger of losing points for the world tour. Well we're Going to throw it over to Michaela Gatto, who's actually... Oh, no. Actually, we got a headset on him. Cool. Let's talk to Emil. Emil, can you hear us? Yeah. Hey, man. So Hi. it was a bummer to see you not able to go through the finish line on that first run. Are you feeling there's a bit of pressure right now, not only just this event, but with points and the overall and getting enough points to go to Joyride? Yeah, for sure. There is... There's a... There's a potential that if I don't do this contest, I won't have enough points. Uh, after this one so uh, yeah for sure it's never an easy path for you but you have the ability to rise to the surface in these high pressure situations martin any words of encouragement for your boy here go for it emil you know you can do this you're thank the you. man i'm yeah, so proud yeah. of you either way thank you. you got it bud we are thank pulling you. for you all three of us here and i know all the fans at home want to see you stomp this run so all the vibes to you buddy you can do this yes. thank you a lot you I appreciate it get it well, gosh, I mean, I don't know. Do you have goosebumps? Yeah. I, yep. These are the yep. moments that careers are built on right now. It's never easy for this guy. It started out so simple for his career. All of a sudden, oh, look, I'm here, and I'm the best in the world, but it's so tough. So, uh, yeah, All hopefully. All things you have to struggle with at the moment. Yeah. Uh, what else is he struggling with? What happens if he doesn't do well at this event? Yeah, exactly. Well, speaking of best in the world we've had another rider who can be considered one of the best in the world really struggling in his run Nikolai Rigak can take a look at his crash from run number one I mean he's progressing right now the stuff that he was trying and this is classic Nikolai Rigakin right here his personality is such that he's not even gonna wait to catch his breath classic he wants to put on a show look at this oh and it's so hard to start on a landing so like that because you that. don't know Yo, how much speed, speed you're gonna take Oh, he you can't should, get in your rhythm. He's a crazy guy. It reminds you of that crazy viral crash footage from Rampage, doesn't yeah, absolutely. it? Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Wild. And man, it's impressive that he's been staying so consistent being a showman like that because he takes so much risk. Instead of just yeah. stopping there, going up, focusing on the second run, he's going for one of the tricks that he is like banger huge. Trick. Like I mean, a that's banger like a first trick. right absolutely. there. Yeah. To do that trick yeah. on that feature. Absolutely. So. Man. 
Wear your pads, kids, because he popped up. Hopefully his head's all right. We saw it hit the ground real hard, but he's a smart guy. He's one of the best in the world, so he'll be able to assess himself and decide if he wants to take a second run. We don't have word on that yet. We're not sure if he's on the start list, so we're going to have to wait and find out. But what were some of the other highlights for you guys from that first round of competition? For me, I would say David. Absolutely. I was, I'm joining you there. That was insane. You know, like for a guy to come on the scene, all the nerves, you know, into a mountain bike sl slope style event and actually throw it down because we were all wondering it like, hey, man, you know, the guy's got all the tricks in the bag, but can he throw it down? We've seen previous athletes come over from BMX and, you know, try to throw down on this course here and it ain't easy. So David Godzik was the first rider to drop today. He was the man to beat until the final rider dropped. That was Brett Reeder. Let's take both of those runs and play them side by side to analyze. That's, that's nice. very cool. All right, so look at this. We got David on, there. on the right, Brett. And that's where on the left, where Brett took a lot of points at the first yeah, flat they're, drop. They're almost even because Brett had him on the first jump and David had him on the second jump. So there we go. Absolutely. We got a point for both of them. Brett totally got him on the first, on the, the yeah, cannon yeah. log. Definitely. Another one for but Brett there. David not far off though with a double whip. Also True. very good. But here is where Brett is and really. And David came up. He tagged up short on that first hip. Now the regular cork seven versus the cash roll. What do you guys think? Well, same, same. Yeah, pretty same. But on the jump before, Brett had him. Exactly. So we'll give them both there. We'll even it out. Yeah, I'd go decade for sure. No, I'll go with David. But agree really? to disagree, buddy. Split decision here. What do we do with this? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's pretty close. <laughs> Final jump. You got to give it to David. Yes, absolutely. A double over the flip whip for sure. So it looks like our panel here agrees with the judges. There's absolutely <laughs> four, four one features for Brett, <laughs> three for David, and then a couple undec undecided And, and David choices. also tagged up. Right? Well, so that also docks your score. You, well, keep that you guys mind. are paid to blabber. The judges are paid to <laughs> score. So let's talk to the judges. Judge before. <laughs> <laughs> judges. Well, as much as those drawings so were super cute, boys, I'm here with the real judges today. Probably the hardest desk job out here. How do you judge the runs just in general? So we judge the runs, uh, obviously, from start to the finish, <laughs> which is the obvious one. But no, the most important thing is um, height, style, overall impression, variety. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration, but we've got a very experienced panel of judges here, mostly former riders or from the Olympics, like Hank Behind, for example. We've got Paul, who's the most experienced slope style judge in history. So we've got a very experienced panel to make sure that these riders are slotted into the right place. And there's been a lot of mistakes, quite a few crashes on that first jump today. Do you slot those in with the judging as well, or how, how do you judge a run that has a mistake in it? So it's really difficult to see riders go down so early on, but we do still have to judge it. We have to judge the difficulty factor. Of, for example, a 360 drop, and then they did a flip, they crash, compared to a tail whip, to a fronty crash at the end. We've, we've almost got to go sway more towards the fronty. We've got to reward them for their crashes as well. Uh, if a rider wants to get back up and continue his run, it's almost a scratch for us, but we do still have to continue judging the rest of his run because other riders might have to do the same thing. So everything is, is done as best we possibly can. Well, it sounds like you know exactly what's going on here. I sure don't, so I'm gonna go back to the finish line, and boys, you can go back to your little drawings. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Michaela. That's a good point, though. When you got a lot of riders not completing their runs, you still have to judge it. Say half the field don't complete their runs, you still have to rank them because these points matter so much. We've seen what happens if you don't get those points. Absolutely, and you have to be correct because these guys are risking their lives, so you want to have the right score and what you deserve. Well, here's the scores that they got for run number one. Eric Fedko bumped out of that podium position right there. He's in fourth. Thomas Lemoyne rounding out the bottom step of the podium in third. David Godziak. Losing that lead at the last second to Brett Reeder. Well, second run's coming up after this. Don't go away. Pump up your tires for the world of Red Bull. The best live events, feature films, and shows. Make it your world and download the app for free. Red Bull TV is available on all your devices, anywhere, at any time. Go beyond the ordinary. Get the app now. Trial by 
bike legend Danny McAskill faces his biggest challenge to date. Come to Africa, he said. It'll be fun, he said. Climbing the highest mountain in Africa with his bike. <sighs> Kilimanjaro, Mountain of Greatness. Now available on Red Bull TV. Austria, this is stop number two of the Crankworx World Tour, and we're about ready to drop run number two of the Crankworx FNBA Slope Style World Tour. Second runs start right now. Well, it's time for second runs here. Brett Reeder finds himself in very familiar territory with a big old bullseye drawn on his back. And this is the cast of characters who are throwing the darts. Nikolai Rogakin, we're not sure if he's going to drop in, but he would be the first. Paul Kuder would be the second. And of course, Brett Reeder gets to hang out at the top to see if anybody has what it takes to force him into a second run or if he gets a victory lap. Now, Michaela Gatto is closer to the course. She's got her ears to the ground, so let's send it down to her for an update. Michaela? Thanks, Cam. Yeah, unfortunately, undefeated champion here, Nikolai Ragakin, is not going to be doing his second run. As we saw, he had a hard crash off the cannon. We don't really know much more information. All I know is his dad and his brother are here, so I'm sure they're going to be taking good care of him, and we hope him the best. We'll let you guys know once we hear more. Wow. Thanks, Michaela. Yeah, we just got another look at that crash right there. He took so many pedal strokes in that berm, and you guys were talking about it during halftime. These riders know their speed from feature to feature, but to start on the landing, you're just guessing. Exactly, totally. But I, I'm pretty sure Nikolai learned a little bit today that yeah, you can't just go 120% every time you ride. Sometimes you have to play it a little bit smart. But Such an animal and a showman, and it has worked for him so many times. Of course, he knows one speed, and it's all out. So we're hoping Nikolai is feeling better soon. We saw him get up. That was great. But right now... Paul Kuder. Let's see if he learned something from the first run and will carry more speed for that big jump. So we saw him with issues in run number one. That is why he's dropping first here in run number two. Reverse start order. Brett Reeder will be dropping last. But Paul Kuder, we talked about him earlier. His second Crankworx slope style event, his first was Leger 2017. Didn't go the way he had planned. Finished far down on the leaderboard, but he worked so hard. Got those points, found himself back on tour. Now, right now, he's looking to make it count. Definitely, and I wonder here if he's waiting out the wind a little bit, because he wants to, yeah, he wants to um, carry as much speed as he possibly can, and I can really understand that. He really wants these points, wants to do a good run, so of course he's gonna wait a little bit for the wind. And this is his only chance right here to get huge Diamond Series points on the Crankworx World Tour. I started following him on uh, Instagram a while ago, and you can tell that he's got all the big tricks. So uh, as long as he just makes it through that first jump, it's going to be a good show. Now, he started out his first run by doing the flat drop backflip one-footed can-can, and it looked good. It was just that headwind that caused him to slow down and not have enough speed for that second jump. He's being smart right now by waiting out the headwind. 
Exactly, and that is a good trick. We Most riders only do flat drop backflips, and he added a can-can as well. We've seen uh, Brett Reeder do that many times, get good points, so he's very smart. Well, yeah, he's going to wait for the wind. And you know what? Even if the wind picks up, he's most concerned about it at the very start, first two features here. So even if he gets a wall that only lasts 15 seconds, hopefully he can get past and make it into that second straightaway. Exactly. It can make all the difference if you're lucky or unlucky with a, with a win there at the start. Crazy thing is a headwind on the first straightaway means a sidewind on the second straightaway. Here we go, Paul Kudair dropping in. Here we go. So this time he's doing the backflip down the first flat drop. Yes. Flip whip, yes. He's going to be stoked, and I'm stoked. Cannon, backflip bar spin, yes. Nice. Keeps the run on with oh. high level tricks, 720 <laughs> over that first hip. Oh. Opposite, 720 on the oh. second hip. Whoa. Did not know he had that. Holy, opposite 360 up. Truck driver down, 360 bar spin, pedaling, take bar it home. Bar double backflip, and he yes. lands it. Paul Kudera, he has what it takes on the Crankworks World Tour. Something tells me oh, this will be the biggest result of his life. Dude, huh, there's something with first <laughs> runs here in Innsbruck. First we see David, first run, putting down a banger, and now, oh my god. The magic of the first run and these double backflips. They're, they're really working today, aren't Dude, they? Dude, I told you, I checked out his Instagram, and I was like, wow, this guy have all the bangers. He just had to put it down, and he just did. I mean, three oh, he's times. So yeah, look at that, that big smile. He's worked so hard for this, and I'm so glad that he waited for that lull. Next event, Matt is going to come with his uh, same hairstyle because it seems to work. Farming the hair has paid <laughs> off. That was a really good flip bar spin on the, on the boner. He's going to get many... I like so, a lot of points for that. Regular 720, he's got to overspin because the angle of hip here is to the left. Exactly. He spun that to the left. Then he takes some pedals. He goes into this right-hand hip. He spins to the right, so he's got to overspin this one. And this one gets dumped right in. That's his opposite, and it was almost even better, exactly. wasn't it? Exactly, and he could tell that Brett did it and sitting in first, and then he was like, okay, I'm going to go for the same thing. Very so, smart. Three features on this course where he rotated 720 degrees. The last one here on this <laughs> final feature. And I like the fact that it was very good, like, variation in that run as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Variety was nice. Finishing things off with that double backflip. And, wow, the celebration. Your day is over there, Paul Kudair. Time to wait <laughs> for your scores and collect those points. Nice one. All right, so the judges right beneath us on this tower here putting in their work. Oh, look at this. He goes into third place, bronze medal territory. An 82.5 for Paul Kudair. That's awesome. That so good for him. See. I love to see like young guys coming into the scene and just smashing it. Oh, man. Yep. I think he'll be around for a while. This is great to see. You know, with so many riders wanting to be here, they have to travel the world to get those points. Oh, I'm very happy to see that Diego is back at the start yes. with that hard crash from the first run. Now, we were worried about his right wrist there. It looked like he jammed it when he crashed on the second feature. But we're not worried about his trick bag, huh? Nope, we're not worried about that. <laughs> we're excited to see what he chooses. That's got to be the hardest part of being Diego Cavrazzasi, saying he's got all these crazy freestyle moto influence tricks like backflip cliffhangers. He's got all the crazy variations like cash rolls. Brett Reeder celebrating there with Casey Brown. Diego Cavrazzasi saw that it worked for Paul Kudair to wait for a lull. He's going to do the same. Exactly. Smart guy. Smart guy. Oh, man. And also, he's got those flip whip, uh, front flips on lock. So, yes, we heard from Darren Berkla before on the first jump. It's very good to do front flip variations because you carry your weight forward and you go further. So it's a good trick to do in the headwind. Now, it's interesting, too, though, because you go, all right, there's a headwind. I need to go really far at the first jump. But if you wait for a lull and you push real hard, <laughs> you know, oh and there isn't that God, headwind. There's so many elements oh, in this so sport. <laughs> oh, luckily, we have our best guys on it up there at the start. Diego Caverzasi 
was a privateer. He's picking up some sponsors these days. But he was supplementing by working in a bike shop. I'm not sure if he's still doing that, but blue collar way to the world tour. But he established himself as one of the best in the world last year. A third place here in Innsbruck. Can he do it again? Here we go, 360X up. Come on, forward. Oh, yeah. Front bar's been perfect on the first big jump. See what you have here on the cannon. Oh, oh flip. <laughs> Yes, 450 tail whip, a little bit of a hang up, but all good. Keeps on going. Come on, Diego. Bring it home. So now he's thinking he, points. Exactly. Let's see what they have on the last jump. Final jump, cash roll, puts it oh. down. So on a day like today, where there's a lot of riders not getting top to bottom runs, it's all about doing the best run you can, even if there's some mistakes, continuing on to get those points for the overall world tour to stay on tour. Brett Reeder congratulating Diego Caverzasi on making it to the finish line. Let's go back. It started so well there with a perfect, very high, perfectly ex executed front flip bar spin. And this front flip of the cannon. I think that's the first one we've seen today, huh, Cam? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Nikolai tried that cash roll, which is kind of a forwardly rotating and variation. this is where it started to go wrong, huh? Yeah, this is where the persistence came to play. Diego Caverzasi never won to wave off a run after a little mistake. A little bit short here as well. Almost thrown it all the way away. Made it all the way to the final feature to finish strong with this cash roll. That's the name for a trick. It's basically a front flip 360, a cork 720 on a forward axis. What will the score be here for Diego Caverzasi? Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, it was good tricks, but he's currently sitting in ninth. The... A lot of room to improve here. All right, he'll improve his score, but maintain his position there in ninth out of a field of 14. So obviously, he's happy he stopped a run. He wishes he could have landed his dream run. Okay, okay, Emilio Hansen in the gate. Now let's reminisce about why he's dropping so early. He's a rider you expect to be fighting for the lead here. Here's his run number one. Actually landed perfect on that 360, so I'm pretty sure it was the wind, because there he came up short on the jump. So two things there. You know he's looking for a bigger variation. You know what he's going for on that second feature. It comes up a little short. Probably not the speed to continue. But right now, a lot of pressure on this kid for points for the overall world tour to stay on tour. Alrighty, Here he goes. Emil. Here we go. Yes, starting off with a 360 on turn on again. Bring. Oh, Whoa. quad truck driver. <laughs> Look at those bars just spinning and spinning forever. Opposite 360 talk down the cannon. He is on. Whoa. What? 360 tail to double bar spin. No. No way. Oh my God, this kid is unreal. Opposite truck to down <laughs> Three with them, come on, Emil. Okay, Bring Emil, it home. You can do this. Oh, yes! Oh, oh, yes! Count it, judges, count I'll it. Count it, definitely. Emil Johansson we're, we're counting it. on for dear <laughs> life. Oh, oh, my God, did you see that opposite <laughs> three whip? Two high fives, come on. Jeez. Oh, How man. does he do it? Like, all the pressure, all the pressure oh. you could possibly have on one run, and he puts down Oh this my God, Emil! More to this young rider than anything in the world. He has fought through so much adversity to be here today. There's no way he was going to let this opportunity go. Man, we need a replay oh, of this run. Freaking out, Martin. Yes, exactly. Oh, so here it all started with a perfect 360 on turn down. Then look at the bar here. One, one two, two, three, four. four. No one else had did time that. Before exactly. He landed. One, one, two, two three, four. four. Could even have done a couple of more, but he was like, nah, that, that will have to do it. Now this. And here, opposite, 360 tuck around there. Very good execution. Now here we go. We saw him doing 360 tail to bar spin on this hip in practice, but check it out. Count him. 360 tail to bar spin, and then a second bar spin. Oh my god, that's like a trick you do for an edit, not exactly. in a contest run. With the most pressure you've ever had in your life. Exactly. And look at this. Opposite, 360, one foot table. And then, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> even in slow motion, it's hard to make yeah, sense. Exactly. Oh, oh my God. But it opposite. wasn't over yet, Martin. It wasn't over yet. It wasn't over. Backflip bar spin in. 
Oh, I'm like out of breath from just talking this much. 360 tail up, down the step down. That trick score is so high out of a whale tail. And look tail. there, he's spinning to your left. Here we and go. where is Get he spinning ready now? For it. Get ready for it. Spin he's it to spinning the right. to his right, opposite. doing opposite 360 whip. Two bar spin. Oh, and look at the right way, way he throws those bars. And look, look how much he wants scene. it. <laughs> but look, he's on, feet on the pedals, hands on the handlebars. He didn't crash till he hit the fence. <laughs> there should be no points deducted no. for that. That I is agree. determination right there. Yes, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's yeah. just amazing. But oh, dude, yeah. I have to go home and teach him bunny hops. He could have bunny hopped that last barrier. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, Sammy. Oh, the crowd goes wild. Where will his score put him? Emil Johansson. Oh man, I'm so impressed and excited for him. You see Brett Reader there on the right side of your screen, wondering what the score will be. Now our judges deliberating, knowing there's so much on the line here. <laughs> oh my God, poor guys, poor judges. With his opposite 360 whip to bar there, like he had to throw the bars the, the, the long way. Exactly, so he did the, exactly, he top side bar is what we call it. And also from the crash in Rotorua, he crashed on an oppo three whip, and now it's like, I'm gonna throw in a bar spin as well. Did it phase him? That just shows how headstrong this guy is. It I doesn't mean, seem to any. Nothing it was seems so to hard him. talking to him in halftime because we know we're like we don't want to exaggerate how much pressure there is on you, but we kind of got to talk to you about it. But look at this, he understood. All right, let's throw it down to Michaela Gatto to hear from Emil. All right, so I was just in the judges' booth saying how hard their job was. It looks like that run was absolutely insane to judge. Were you planning to do all of those tricks? Yeah, it was my first run plan, but I got stuck because I didn't carry enough speed through the drop landing into the first long and low. So yeah, it was tough coming into this run, knowing whether or not I was going to go full pull or not. So it was basically step by step, jump by jump, how the wind felt. And yeah, after I could see that the jumps were good enough, most of the time I just went for it. Well, it looked like you also just landed and tried to go straight to the party. So we'll yeah. see if that's a deserving exactly. run. Yeah, <laughs> I'm too amped. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Wow, OK, OK. Thank you, Michaela. Now we're on pins and needles here. The score to beat, held by Brett Raider, a 92. This amazing run from Emil Johansson doesn't have what it takes to knock Reader out. It does! Oh. 95! <laughs> Emil Johansson is in the lead! Oh, I just wow. want to run down and hug him now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Emil Johansson pulls the rug out from under Brett Reader. And Reader knows it's time to get to work. And dude, the judges were listening to you. He rode out and then for a little bit and then just decided oh, to man. jump off the barrier. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> oh, what a guy. How okay. does he do it? Okay, I got these crazy goosebumps. I feel like, like they're never gonna go away. Oh, there's so much to talk about right now. Oh my gosh, that my, my brain is just... Wow, the pressure crying. is on Brett Reeder now. We're gonna have to wait until the last rider of the competition until we see Brett Reeder. There's so many riders to go. But we know we're gonna end with something crazy. I mean, David Godziak still has to go. But right now, it's all about Anthony Missouri. He was one of the riders who struggled in run number one. He needs to get these points to stay on tour. He got in today on an alternate basis, believe it or not. He's a fixture on the Crankworks FNBA Slope Style World Tour. But he needs a great result here to stick around and make it to Joyride. Here we go, Anthony Missouri. Tail whip drop. Oh, that's gonna be hard. Slip the pedal there, but got it. He got it. Oh my god, that's very, very impressive. Boner log truck driver. Oh. oh. Flip whip. Yes. Frostic no hander on the second oh, hit. Oh on. my god, yes. he's holding on. Opposite 360 up. Backflip bar spin. Yes. What's he got for the final jump? Backflip Flip, double tail up, and oh. he stops it. This is exactly what <laughs> Anthony Materi needed, and he is buzzing. Yes, dude, <laughs> how have this second round started? Oh, oh man, God. this is ridiculous. All the guys who had troubles in the first <laughs> round just coming back stronger than ever. Oh, this is so fun to watch. Oh, <laughs> it's almost too much. We're gonna be... Uh, it turns out slope style mountain biking is really impressive. <laughs> it's really entertaining. Okay. 
Let's look back to this run. Started out. How he could the he pedal. do this? He slipped the pedal a little bit. I don't Recovered. think he's going to get a huge deduction for that. No, no. And then a long dart front flip, so he goes even further. But these tricks are not easy to do on the hip. And this time, as we can see, he had problems with this in his first round, catching his pedals, but now pretty much perfect. Or landing a little bit on his crank there, but there. And a little bit sideways, but he holds on. And check it out, he did a front flip on this feature in and, run number one. Dude, he adds look, the variation here. Look, look at, at that this. back wheel. All right, stop the footage if you can. Watch this, when we roll the footage, this back wheel is stopped. That's because you initiate a front flip by tapping that rear brake, roll the footage, check it out. See, that wheel's not spinning. And almost stop, of you. Stop, stop it when he's landing as well. Look how far down, if we keep going a little bit, look where he's landing on this. And we thought he was gonna blow yeah. up right here. All right, roll full speed. Like look at down this there. Tire. Like, look at his like head. <laughs> his head was almost on the front tire, but he puts his eyes up and he finishes strong with his backflip double tail. We we're saying, don't throw it away, Anthony, don't throw it away. But look, click, click, feet right to the pedal, spot the landing, wait for your score. Oh, yes. It was actually almost like a backflip double tail with Superman because he's Seriously. like so stretched out and working with his whole body. Style. He's stoked. I'm stoked. You're stoked. Gosh, I am incredibly stoked. And look at this. Look at the smile on this man's face. Okay. Anthony Missouri sitting on a 52.25. You know he's going to improve that. Where will it put him in the rankings? And will it be enough to get some points for Joyride? The judges know how much is on the line here. I mean, a competitive slope style career yeah, can gonna... continue if you get the right score here. Exactly. We all hope for that. Gosh, Anthony I mean, is always going big. He's hands down he's... one of the best in the world right here. To think that he was an alternate coming in is mind-boggling. Shows where the sport is at the moment. There's just tons of very talented kids and older guys, obviously. Just a couple little mistakes, and that could be it for your points. But right now, Anthony did his job yeah, not really anything to come. All right, score coming in for Anthony Missouri out of Canada. A 79, putting him in seventh place, getting those very valuable points. Way to go, Anthony Missouri. Yes, I think that was, he's gonna be happy with that. And he knows that he had a little bit of a foot slip. So uh, I think that was good judging. So there's our leaderboard right now. Emil Johansson leading the charge, backing Brett Reeder into a corner. He will drop last. But now, Darren Barrycloth is up at the top of the course with a guy we were hoping to see on this leaderboard. We were hoping to see him drop for second run, but he isn't. For more on that, let's hear from Darren Barrycloth. Folks, standing here with Nikolai. Nikolai, that was a pretty insane run you threw down on first one, unfortunately. Got a bit of unlucky bad luck there. And uh, tell us what's going on right now. Uh, yeah, so first run didn't go very well for me. I was uh, doing a quick pedal into a front flip tail up on the first one and foot slipped, so bailed. Pretty bummed, so I tried to get back up and finish my run. Crashed real hard on the cash roll on the uh, boner log, hit my head real hard, um, and now having to uh, sit out the second run because uh, when you hit your head, it's, uh, it's a bit of a gnarly situation, and I, uh, I rung my bell pretty good. So sitting it out and watching these boys shred. We've had some tough conditions this week, and uh, cool to see these guys making it happen. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like we were chatting earlier, you know, the brain is something you just don't want to mess with. And, you know, I, I fully support and give you a, a big, big high five for... Uh, manning up and stepping away even though you know you look fine and whatnot but you know the head's just something you don't want to mess with yeah for sure i mean it's super hard to step away especially at this type of event where i'm going for the three-peat yeah, yeah. obviously want the win really bad and uh have an insane run prepared through through practice but uh yeah the head's something like you said you can't mess with it so sitting out this one and uh and watching the boys because they're uh they're killing it out here so yeah, yeah they are boys back up to you uh, thanks, Darren and Nikolai. All the credit to Nikolai Rogakin for that decision. Crankworks operates off of a preset concussion protocol. And uh, that's the thing. We know more now than we used to know. You know, we used to just go, I think I'm fine. I can see straight. Let's go. But with all the research that's been done about the impacts of repeated concussions, Nikolai Rogakin doing the smart thing for the longevity of his career. And us as fans, we like to see him making that decision as well. Exactly, totally. We want to see him in Whistler. We want to see him, him at other events. So uh, very smart to do that. So here we go. Let's see if the legacy Alex continues. <laughs> all started by you, Martin, of <laughs> Swedish slope style superstars. Say that 12 times fast. Alex Alonko. Let's see if he can do the same thing as Emil. 
missed a little bit in the first run, but then step up to the plate on the second run. This kid worked so hard last off season, wasn't where he wanted to be last year in his first Crankworks appearance right here in Innsbruck. He got a third place in Rotorua to kick off the season. He wants to carry that momentum now. The flags are looking pretty good now as I look over the, the course here. True. So uh, Here we go, yeah. Alex Alonco on course. 360 can-can, like in the first run. Backflip, double bar spin. Yes, we got the first jump out of the way. Cool. Nice. Yes, cannon 360 double bar spin. Opposite 360 can-can. Sick, Alex. Go for it. Yes. Yes. Cork 720 on the hip. Backflip bar spin. Oh, oh, very slow and stylish 360 down that step down. Here we go. Opposite, opposite cork. cork so oh. Alex Alonco going for that opposite cork 720 on the final feature, which would have nicely complemented the regular cork 7 he did on the second hip in the four pack. Unfortunately, landing on his hip there. Oh, that was so close to being a perfect landing. Ah, oh, what happened? Congratulated by your leader right there, fellow Swede Emil Johansson, Alex Alonco, not getting a top to bottom run here today. Yeah, that's a bummer. I really feel for him. He's doing all the work and preparing perfectly, and just you, sometimes this stuff, this stuff just happens. Good start as well with that backflip double bar spin over the big jump. Look at this. I like this. He really hung that one out there. Exactly. Karate Kid just. So run number one wasn't exactly what he wanted, so he came out swinging here using the same trick he used at stop number one to get a third place, but look what happened. I think it's the knee, no? Ah, just a little just bit sideways. a rotation sideways. issue, yeah. yeah. Well, he really gets wrapped up when he's upside down in that thing. Spinning toward your front foot makes it so much more difficult on those Exactly. At least it didn't, didn't look like he hit the ground that hard, so we're excited to see him walk away. So Alex Alonco will not improve his score with that crash. But we love to see him going for it. Hopefully we'll see him back for the final stop of the tour at Joyride later on in August. But look at that. That is the look of focus right there on the face of Brett Reeder, a man who has accomplished so much in this sport. The 2018 overall world tour champion, the man who won the stop that kicked off our season in New Zealand. And at the top of the course right now is the Italian Torquato Testa, a man who's been on the podium in Crankwork Slopestyle. He wants to be back there. He's got one opportunity to do so here. 360 bar spin down the first drop. Back flip, Takno Ander. I'm sure he was wanted something more, but at least he's still on course. Love it. Back flip, no foot can off the cannon. Downside double whip on the first hip. Oh, yes! Oh, sick! Double flip on the on the hip. I've never seen that double truck up. Back flip, no hander down. Here we go. This cork 720. Oh, there we yes. go. Great run for Torquato Testa. That is how he finished his first run. But man, did he ever improve on this run here in his second opportunity. Now, that double flip, that was a creative spot to put it. Totally. I've never seen a double flip on a hip before, I think. So that was cool. I think the judges are going to like that and score him well for that. These two push each other so hard. Diego Caverzasi on the right side of your screen there. His friend Torquato Tessa just dropping a huge run. That's sick. I really like that. Back flip, no foot can. No one else is doing that. Torquato does it to perfection. Here we go. This was the most unique part of the run right here. We've seen a couple double flips on the last jump, but we have never seen it in the hip. It's hard to double flip and choose what angle you're going to land on. And look at this. He does a great job of not... Totally. Of not messing up. It's hard to do a double flip straight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then finishing it off with a Quirk 720. And as you said, spinning a little bit more like Ryan Nyquist, a little bit less upside down, and I really like that. I like that too. There we go, Anthony Missouri back there with a well-deserved beer. What will the score be for Torquato Testa? Looking for those valuable points. Torquato Testa currently sitting on a 71, looking to better that score. Now he had a bigger run, so you gotta believe the score will be higher, but what will he need to crack into a bigger position here? 
We'll see here how much they duck that first jump, because he did a backflip no-hander, which is maybe not a very high-scoring trick, but at the same time, he double-flipped the hip, so it's like... Yeah, you could tell he wanted more. He was pinching the seat after that no-hander on the second feature. So, he would need four more points to tie Lucas Knopp for ninth to move up one position. For podium position, he would be looking to better an 83-5. Now, even if he doesn't move into the top three, it's all about moving up in ranking order because that's what establishes how many points you get. There we go. He moves up considerably, and 81 puts him into sixth place. That will help his cause for Joyride. Wow, this is awesome. It's so cool to see that the second runs are really, like, yeah. Yeah. bumping up the level. It's, it's, uh, especially, I mean, the wind is dying down. People are rising to the occasion. That's what slope style is all about right here. Under pressure and making it happen. Totally, and doing it for Germany, Lukas Knopf. Now this guy, last season was showing up to a lot of stops as an alternate, but now proving some consistency here, staying on tour for a while. He's one of the taller riders, so he won't maybe have as much problem with the wind. We will see. Double truck down the, yeah. step, down the drop. Huge front flip on the first jump. Here we go. Taylor with two bar spin down huge. the cannon. No one have done that in this. Oh, and then bar spin to tail whip. Okay, truck driver there. Back to bar spin up. Truck driver, 360 bar spin down. Got Pedaling. Strong. Ah, oh, he, wow. we know he wanted that backflip to bar, backflip tail whip to bar spin. Just didn't quite get the speed. I mean, a great run. But we know what he was hoping to finish that run with because he landed it in his first run. But all smiles there for Lucas Knopf. The big question will be, will the judges give him a higher score because he squeezed in some crazy variations? The tail up to Barsman off the cannon is uh -huh. downright nutty. I want to look back and see how much time he had after getting his feet back on the pedal before doing the bar spin. And also the double truck down the first drop was also one of the better tricks we've seen all day. Big front flip on the first jump. Good job, Lucas. So here's the cannon here. He does the tail. When he gets his feet on the pedals, oh, well, it's hard to see from that angle, but roll the footage. Let's see how, yeah, he oh. was so close to landing when he chucked those bars. That is commitment. Here we can see it one more time. And I mean, people, I don't think you understand that this is not a regular jump. You oh my. move so much faster forward that it's way worse to crash on a cannon than on a jump. And then I like this. He's complimenting the tail up to bar spin on the cannon with a bar spin to tail up on the hip. Exactly. This was a really good run. It had like some of the things in the run was Watch. like. He catches, he's thinking bar spin. He puts his seat in his <sighs> knees, but just not as composed at that moment as he was in his first run. But still, this is going to be a great score. Let's look at where he's currently sitting. He's sitting with the. He was with the 75, and now he's looking to improve. What's it going to be? Okay, he improves the score, 76.75. So the judge is rewarding that. That'll be good knowledge for him moving into future contests. So if you're just joining us right now, this has already been a doozy of a competition. This man right here, the young Swede, Emil Johansson currently sitting in the leader position. He was backed into a corner, so much pressure. But look at this, 360 quad bar spin. Take it from here, Martin. Yeah, then opposite truck. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> Opposite 360 <laughs> table to, to down whip, back whip bar spin. <laughs> 360 whip. And here we go. And then here we go, opposite 360 tail whip to regular bar spin. Oh my God. We have and never seen this it. trick. In and a then contest this happens. before, I believe, this. and look oh, at this. The level of technicality through the roof. But we are so excited. <laughs> <laughs> we are so excited that the judges didn't like dock him I too mean, much for that because he still landed and he rode out. If the barrier was wouldn't have been there, he would have completed his land run perfectly. It so was I, like a little flavor, a little spice sprinkle on top, a disappearing act at the end of a fantastic run. Exactly. Showmanship. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the run to beat right there. He scored a 95 for his efforts, a whole three points ahead of the closest challenger, Brett Reeder.
the 2018 world champ, the guy who kicked off this season with a big win. But David Godziak in his first appearance, still sitting in podium position. He has another run to go, but it's all about that man right there. He will be the last to drop. No victory lap for Brent Reeder today. Emilio Hansen is back. Oh, this is exciting. Next rider in the start tower, Jakob Wenzel. An always exciting rider. Look at this, he was wearing Iron Maiden to start his first run. He's wearing <laughs> Slayer now. Big fan of hard and heavy rock and roll. And this guy has been doing really well at speed and style as well, so we know that he's got the bike control needed to handle this course. A future world champ in speed and style. Getting the points to be back on the Slope Style World Tour. Exactly, and actually doesn't do speed and style anymore, focusing 100% on slope style. And it's been showing. Yes, very much so. First flat drop, let's see it. 360x up, good start. Huge oh, cash so roll on smooth. the first drop. Composed. Let's see on the cannon. Backflip no-hander, also big extension, perfect. Hip, 360 double bar spin. Really good run so far. 720 on the second hip. Wow. Flawless so far. Yes, 360 on turn down up, back fit bar spin. Here we Come go. Come on, last jump. Oh no! no. Oh man! What Jakob Wenzel with perhaps a lapse in focus on the final feature. Wow, not sure what happened there. I know, I know he landed a little bit low out of the whale tail. I don't know if it was a speed issue or what. But, but at the same time, if you're like going in for a double flip or something that, oh yeah, like no. he did, then if everything isn't perfect, it's very hard to like commit and do that. You know what's possible? Anyway. There could have been about 12 potential trick ideas running through his mind really exactly. quick as he's approaching that lip. That's the thing. Oh, he, okay. His cash rolls, he likes to call them rodeo sevens, are one of my favorites in the game. So casual looking, so much style. Exactly. And here we have... As we talked about before, not very upside down, regular, very stylish 720. On the hip. Exactly, so I have to overtake that 720. So I actually have to spend, spin even harder. So let's see how he landed here on this backflip X up out yeah. of the whale tail. Yeah, I'm confused. Everything looked so good. Here we go. Um, Maybe I mean, a little long. Barely yeah. long and a barely over rotated, but this is where probably 12 tricks were going through his mind. Yeah. Going, should I do a cash roll? Already did a cash roll. Should I do a court seven? Already did a court seven. Double flip? Do I do a double flip? He did a double flip in round number one. Exactly. That's what it was. Okay. And you have to be so committed, and everything has to be perfect to do Gosh. a double flip. So I can, I can see it. Too bad he couldn't have just chucked something else out. Exactly. I know. But that happens to the best of us. Absolutely. So Jakob Wenzel not going to improve his score. The last jump, meaning just as much as all those other jumps in this day and age. Straight air really hurts you. Well, Darren Bearcloth is hanging out at the top of the course with his ear to the ground. Let's check in with him. Darren? Thanks, bud. Yeah, I was uh, chatting with Reader earlier here, and, you know, the guy's got some... Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, he's got some uh, some insights up here, what he's got left in the bag. And, uh, yeah, you know, he's been stressing quite a bit about what he's got in the bag that he's been training on back home. And uh, I'm pretty uh, I'm rooting for the kid. He's got a lot of stress on his shoulders. He's got a second run. He's got to come up over top of, uh, of a meal with an insane run there. And uh, we're all going to have to wait and see what he's got in the bag. Back to you, Cam. Wow. I mean, Brett Reeder has been lucky enough or just good enough, I should say, to enjoy so many victory laps. The pressure's off when you stop your run and it's right back on when somebody beats you. Exactly, and it's so hard for Brett as well because his runs are always so close to the to the limit. Well, and yeah, <laughs> it's very hard to go up there and know that, oh, I even have to step up that almost perfect run. Brett Reeder knows what it's like to win a Crankwork Slope Style Stop. Eric Fedko would love to experience that at some point in his life. We asked him about that. Here's what he had to say. It's pretty hard to win Crankworks these days because there are so many guys laying down insane runs and everyone is training hard, getting their tricks dialed. And yeah, almost every single rider could win this contest. So it's a hard one. Well, despite being a young rider, he really has his head wrapped around the reality of the circumstances he finds himself in. He has risen to prominence so quickly, finishing last season with two podiums. 
Here we go, second run for Eric Fedko. 360 bar spin down the first drop, backflip double bar spin, perfect start. And you can see, very stylish. 360 tail whip down the cannon, also perfect. Oh. Truck driver to tail whip, wow. Oh, there oh, and is. there it is, the trick he missed in the first run. 360 Indian Air, 360 down whip that he missed in oh. Rorua. Get it now. Backflip, a little bit of a no-hander. Here we go, last jump. Backflip, oh, Superman Seacrub gets the extension straight back to the pedals. I would say he improved there. He got the 360 Superman Seacrub Indian Air extended. Now, he almost bobbled going into the whale tail on that 360 downside tail whip, but he still got his hands up a little bit on that step down flip. Crazy to be able to still get that trick after a slight bobble. There we have the bar spin and the tail whip. 360 bar spin to tail on the hip, catching pedals early. Now, the first few features were exact carbon copies of run number one, but here's where he improved. I'm gonna ask you to stop the footage at full extension here. It gets his hand on the seat. All right, pause. And look so, how far up Run he's... number one, his legs were down here somewhere. Run number two, there they are. That is going to be an improvement. Roll the footage. Full on yoga mode. Full on. I would say everything in this run was perfect up and to that uh, step down. And let's really break down the extension on his final trick here. Backflip gets his hand on the oh. seat. Superman Seeker up. Let's stop at full extension there. Look at that. Okay, so pretty straight body here. Maybe a slight bend in the knees. You know, as long as he's within this range here of horizontal to vertical, it's good. So I think that's going to score as high. Roll the footage as his first run here. The big question is how much did he get his hands off on the step down flip out of the whale tail. And that's a big consequence, or like high consequence trick. If you don't grab the seat there, you're gonna be upside down, not okay, knowing cool. where you are. So we've broken down this run. Now it's up to the judges. He was in 11th place. He moves into seventh place right there in 80.75. Visibly not that impressed with the score. He was just rewarded for that run. You know he wanted to get back onto that podium. He's gonna get points for that seventh place right now. But you know, he wanted, once you taste that blood at podium, and hey. you get to smell that champagne when you take your bike out of the box when you get home, you want that again so bad, don't you? Exactly, and it also shows that if you just mess up on one trick, yeah. it is, it's, it's gonna cost you. So Fedco in the seventh place right there now. Our top three is what we're talking about. David Godziak still has a run to go. Brett Reeder still with the run to go. He'll be dropping last because Emil Johansson is your current leader in the Crankworx Innsbruck Slope style. More runs coming up. Don't go away. Well, the energy is absolutely palpable here in beautiful Innsbruck, Austria on what turned into Slope Style Sunday after a huge six hour wind delay on Saturday. And it's a good thing we waited because this has been quite the show, Martin Soderstrom. Oh my God, second runs have been absolutely firing. And you know what the best part is? We have some more riders coming. Oh my gosh. Uh, and on top of that, we're hanging out in what a beautiful place. If you're not familiar with where Innsbruck, Austria is, we'll, we'll zoom out for you. We'll start out from space. We'll zoom right down into Europe on the western side of the country of Austria in the Alps. They call it the urban alpine city here. So much mountain biking to be had. And for the third year, we've brought Crankworks World Tour. Now, your leaderboard in the Crankworks Innsbruck Slope Style currently looks like this. The rider going next is sitting in fifth position. He's currently leading the king of Crankworks overall. He will finish no lower than fifth because the rest of the riders left to go are already sitting ahead of him. So only one direction to go, which is up here for Thomas Lemoyne. Totally. We should maybe talk about his pants, but let's talk about his riding instead. <laughs> <laughs> We've done that so many times. Yeah, true. But he never disappoints us. He's always got the craziest pants. Craziest pants and the craziest style and tricks. So uh, never disappoints, that's for sure. He squeezes so much in to a slope style run. Now, his first run was so good. What does he have to top it? We're about to find out. Truck driver, down the drop. Oh, Back yeah! Flip. Oh, no! Oh, man! No, no. Wow, good to see him pop right back up because that was like falling out of the sky right there. He was going for the backflip, double tail whip. We were wondering what he was going to do to improve because his first run was so good. But that's what they do, man. They drag the tricks from a different part of the course and they put it on a more difficult feature. Absolutely, and that was 
a very big move to do a, a backflip double tail whip on the biggest jump of the course. Wow. So we talk a lot about this King of Crankworks overall competition, and Thomas Lemoyne may not be happy with this individual run right here, but he's got to be happy with how the season's going so far for him. He picks up some more points today for his fifth place, but this is what the overall leaderboard looks like. Thomas Lemoyne ahead of Keegan Wright and Adrian Larone, and they have to just sit back and watch today because they are not slopestyle competitors. They compete in downhill pump track, dual slalom. Larone competes in speed and style. But Lemoyne back up and riding right now. <laughs> what a showman. Totally, man. He crashed hard. You know what? We need a moment of silence for those pants because we will never see them again. I know. He's going to have to get another Sharpie, another <laughs> tight pair of denim. Well, that's a lot of work. He's got to spend a couple hours totally. tattooing those pants. I really hope, though, that that's how some racers save their number plates. He saved yeah. his pants on the, on the wall at home. Because that's some, that's some art right there. Maybe when he wins King of Crankworks in Joyride, we can auction those things off. Oh, my. Oh, my. Look at this, Martin. Okay. Baby, In God the sake. start tower right now is the rider who was the first to drop today. He dropped an insane run and was untouchable until the bottom of the start order. He is now all the way down in third, still podium position. And we heard him say it. That was his first safe run that he did. So, uh, all right. Claw's got his ear to the ground up there. He's picking up on tiny little tidbits that we want to be privy to. Bar Darren? These guys up here, they're definitely having a, a good day, getting some serious runs down. And this guy, Godjack, this is his first big show, and he is no stranger to throwing it down. This, this BMX superstar, he's got all the tricks in the bag to make it happen, and he wants to come out firing. And I know this guy's got some serious tricks in the bag, and you guys are gonna have to uh, watch us, uh, watch him throw down probably one of the sicker runs of the day. Let's, uh, let's root him on, folks. Back to you, Cam. We are ready, Darren. Now, at the bottom of his first run, he said, well, I wanna do some more stuff, and we've been guessing, what is he gonna try to add to this? He has so many variations on those technical rotations. He's going to have to do the same plus more if he wants to move higher up these rankings. Exactly, but it's a great situation for him. He knows that he's top three and he can only improve, improve from here. Well, he started out strong. He was doing the 1080 on the second feature. Let's see what he's got in run number two, David Godziak. Yes, 360 down the first one, just the same as his first run. Oh, Whoa! no! Whoa! The front court 1080, <laughs> no-hander, a twister, no-hander. Twister, no-hander, straight into a double whip down the cannon. So he's, he's already improving. Double trot. Double yeah, trot. Double this time. Oh, he needs Little to get wobble. this cashy. Cashy oh, bar. Cashy bar spin. Oh, 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 perfect. Oh, cash roll bar spin. Front flip, no-hander, going huge. Big back flip Here down the step now. Double back what? flip, back stop. He went on the whole time. <laughs> you almost fell off your seat, Cam. <laughs> oh, David Godziak. This is insane. What a contest we have today. And the second runs, man. Oh, where do you even want to start with this, Martin? Where do you start? <laughs> I think we start with the twister. No, oh Ander. Oh, my. Let's let him celebrate. <laughs> and then let's do just that. Let's start with the twister. No, Hander. So oh my God. many ridiculous moments in this run. So he starts off a little bit slow like he did in the first run, but look at this. Oh boy, gets the hands off. He's on a forward axis, flipping once, spinning twice for a total of 10, 80 Man. degrees of rotation with the variation. I wonder how much G-force it is in that trick. It's a big number. Big number. And here, here we go. perfect double whip, also super good points. So he's gonna get good <laughs> points for that. This then is the only a bit unlucky moment for him where he comes up a but, little bit short. But he improved the trick. I believe he had a single bar spin yes, there. Yes, true. Very so a little bobble here. And he didn't put it to foot down into the ground. So. But the real story is the fact that he was able to still get his foot back here. on the pedal. And there we go. Cash roll, bar spin. That is a front cork 720 on a hip with a bar spin. He puts those tires right into the landing Boom. perfectly. Perfect. And this is when and we go, oh boy. speed oh enough boy. for this. <laughs> Huge extension front flip. 
Front flip, tuck, no hander here. And then he's setting up for the final feature. He's gonna keep things simple before these big jumps. And even because he has big plans. Exactly, and even if that back flip is simple, he here we went go. huge. Double back flip with... And oh, oh over clicked X up. It was past 180 degrees. Now, what constitutes an oh, X up? Oh, look at that! He that's almost threw it away. Bike. He almost and that's threw it away. That's where you almost fell off the seat. That's where we almost needed medical for me. I almost fell to the top story <laughs> of this tower we're in right now. All right, let's talk about what really matters here. The score to beat for the lead is a 95, currently held by Emil Johansson. David Godziak wants to slide into that lead there. Wow, okay, so he improves his score by by 5.25 points. Wow, we that, Oh my god, he must be happy with that one. Top gosh, three in his first ever. That just hints at things to come for the future and how high of a level we're on here right now. Oh boy. Oh boy. <sighs> okay, Brett Reeder backed into a corner here right now. He's dealt with rivalry so many times in the past with Brandon Semnick, with Nikolai Regakin, but right now, look at that, his new rival. He had this to say when we asked him what he thought about these rivalries. So smile on the face of Emilio Hansen because his job is done for the day. He applied all the pressure. You gotta think, if you're Brett Reeder, you watch this kid coming up and when you first see him, you go, oh boy, he's going to make things very tough for me. Brett Reeder had this to say about the topic of rivalries. Well, like, I used to hate the rivalry, and I still kind of do. Like, Brett and Nikolai battle in Innsbruck. Like, oh my god, shut up. Like, I don't care about that. That's so stupid. Brett Brandon this, Brett Brandon that for so many years, I hated it. But now I'm able to look at that and be like, oh yeah, that actually was the reason why he went and learned those tricks and that was the reason why I learned my tricks and then when you step back from that you're like oh the sport actually just went up three notches it is so true these riders push each other to new heights right now the story is can Brett Reeder better the score of Emilio Johansson but the big picture here Emilio Johansson all that he's had to triumph over to be here, his struggle with his health. And could he be the first European in the last seven years to win a crank work stop? Brett Reader on course. We got the flat drop flip whip again. Perfect. We have the front flip bar spin. Perfect start for Brett. Oh, Back flip, even opposite tail this whip. Time. Yes. This run is smoother than his first run so far. Opposite cork seven in the hip. Regular oh, yeah. cork seven bar. Oh, yeah, he's got it. Come on, <laughs> hold on. Get the three, three down, down up. Perfect. Oppo truck down. Here oh we my go. God. He needs to get the back flip. Brett. Opposite double whip. Come on. Oh, he's oh. on the bike. He rode it out. <laughs> he rode it out. <laughs> oh, my. And showing his butt there a little bit for the girls as well. Oh, my. <laughs> How oh. many times are we going to almost fall off of this announcing tower? Totally. Jeez. And, oh, I... <laughs> The judges are gonna <laughs> work hard for uh, this. Oh my God, how for, cool was that? Dropping in, making everything that was a little bit squirrely in the first run, make like polishing that, doing it perfectly. For the past seven seasons, North American competitors have dominated the top step of the Crankworx Slope Style podium. Emilio Hansen right now sitting in first place, but Brett Reeder just dropped the run of his life, starting out with this flat drop backflip tail whip. He didn't do it in practice. It said, he says it's too gnarly. So he did it twice, one in each run. And then we have the front flip bar spin. We can see maybe he was going for the tuck, but all good. That's still such a banger trick with a front flip bar spin. Well, very next feature right here, he makes up for missing those hands off because he's doing a trick that nobody else has done in this sport, a backflip opposite tail on a cannon. Almost no one is doing that on a jump, actually. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, Now, the wow. cannon scores so much higher when you do these technical combos because it doesn't have a radius on the lip. You have to generate all that rotation with your body weight. Speaking of rotation. Exactly, opposite cork seven. Man, his brain must be a computer to just keep track of what 
like what way to spin. So then he did the regular Cork 720 bar spin, which is an improvement on the second hip, and then linked it into this 360 downside whip into an opposite truck driver in. Then we knew what trick he was going for here. Exactly, back to back all the way. And now maybe we ha we need to censor this because it looked like he his butt yeah. was coming out a little bit there. <laughs> but I don't blame him. Backflip, back opposite, opposite double, double tail whip. <laughs> <laughs> and that is exactly how he landed last year in Rotorua. Yes, One foot right. on the pedal, the other foot, I don't even think touched the ground there. He's not going to get oh very docked for that. I can't even think about backflip opposite double tail whip. No. I can't think about don't an opposite try. double tail whip don't even and try. then being upside down. <laughs> okay, so a lot of pressure on these judges here right now. Smiles on the face of Brett Reeder and Emilio Hansen because it's anybody's game right now, but not for long. As soon as those scores are in, history will be made, and we will have a winner here. And both guys are showmen. One guy jumping off the barrier, one guy is flashing with his butt a little bit. So <laughs> what we have at stake here for Emilio Hansen, he could be the first European slopestyle rider to win a competition at a Crankworx event in the last seven seasons. For Brett Reeder, he won the first stop. He's the only one alive for the Triple Crown. If he wins, his hopes are still alive moving into Joyride, the final stop of the season. But it all comes down to what numbers these judges assign to this run from Brett Reeder. Oh man, you would really have to take this feature by feature and be like, like we did before in the <laughs> half show, marks. to be like, to really see. Well, gosh, uh, let's think about it. I mean, Brett definitely has him on the first feature with the flat flip whip yes second definitely. feature a quad truck versus a front flip bar spin i mean it's gosh, definitely it's, a quad truck. I, I would have I, to I would, agree. No, not definitely but have to give it to emil so off of the cannon here we have the backflip opposite tail up from brett now that's pretty heavy exactly and what did we have from emil was it a three whip three inward maybe no that was from the first uh i think Maybe oh, it's so oh, hard so to many keep, things keep track Okay, of. let's go to the four pack. All right. <laughs> so exactly, but I think he did a three whip down the bound down the cannon. And then he did uh, a three whip to double bar on the first. Exactly. To and Brett's opposite cork sev. I would say 360 whip to double bar, maybe a little bit higher, go. just one because first. it's. Uh, and then the it's next a trick no one else have done. Pack. Brett did the regular cork seven bar. Okay, we will just have to wait and see. Okay, what is it going to be? Triple Crown Hope still alive for Brett Reeder or the first European winner in seven seasons? Here we go. The numbers are climbing. Oh! oh. <laughs> Brett does it by a half a point. Wow! Dude, and we talked oh about rivalry before. I saw and this is exactly oh. what happened. I thought I saw 95 and I thought it was a tie for a second. I went, wait a minute. What, <laughs> what are we going to do? a half a point. Wow, Emilio Hansen gets his first big win on the Crankworks Tour. Let's send it down to Michaela Gatto. Okay, so we were talking before. You said, what, what did you, tell me what you said. Um, well, I was like, I really, I really want to win because I've, uh, I've come second the last two years to Nikolai. And um, yeah, I was, I was tempted to just like do a stock run because I'm so pumped for this guy and, and all the stuff he's been through. And uh, I'd be stoked either way if, if, if he won. I'd be just as stoked. And, um, and I was saying that just before they gave the, the scores. But uh, you'll be seeing him on the top of the podium here uh, soon. And that last trick, um, was the pants down thing intentional? Or what do we, what do we call that? I thought maybe a Mills was a tad embarrassing going over the fence, but mine. <laughs> Mine just took a whole new level of embarrass. You, you, won the, you won the competition and you won the most embarrassing moment here today. So congratulations. It was, it was a close call, though. It was super impressive riding by all the riders. Emil, insane. Um, yeah, thank you, everyone, for coming out. Amazing job. And Emil, is it safe to say you are back and maybe just graduated yourself to ninja status out here today? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm, I have my workout and I and I hope I'm back now. It's uh, no guarantees in this sport and you gotta take one day at a time. Well, I'd say there's no hoping here today. You are back and you're in second place. Thank you. Yeah. Woo! Good job, boys. Gosh, what a finish to an event right there. Brett Reeder still alive for the Triple Crown. 
But man, is there somebody really closely biting at his heels? He's dealt with rivalries so many times in his career. There's always somebody right there pushing him. Right now, Emilio Hansen is that person. Brett Reeder by a half a point. Man, it doesn't get much <laughs> tighter than that. Oh my God. And it and looks then, like the yeah. only way you can be in the top two here is to have some, some kind of really crazy thing happen at the landing of the final <laughs> jump. I mean, who would have thought Emil would have gone through a fence or Brett Reeder would have showed a little skin? Man, totally. And let's not forget, for, for, <laughs> forget about David. I mean, <laughs> yes, exactly. yeah, coming in, his first, first big slope event and first, third place. First podium right there. So this is crazy. Here's the look at the Slope Style World Championship points right now. Brett Reeder, flawless on the season. 2,000 points to his name. But being rewarded for his consistency, Thomas Lemoyne is hanging out in second place. Now, because of those issues Emil had at the first stop, not being able to ride the competition, he's all the way down there in eighth. But we will see him and Joyride. We will see this rivalry continue. And we will see Nikolai Ragakin back to add his run to the mix. Gosh, this is two-thirds of the way through the season. Thank goodness we've got another event coming up in a few months. Man, totally. And must feel good for Emil as well to finally be able to breathe maybe a little bit and feel like, okay, something is going my way finally. And now I can go home, prepare for the, the gold events that are coming up Seriously, in Seriously, uh, if you think about Europe it, even though he's been a world champion, he's still a young gun on the circuit, not just because exactly. of his age, but, but he, he's, if you counted the amount of contests he's done, Crankwork Slope Styles, it's going to be a small number still. Oh, big time. He's far behind me. Far, far behind me. But it's super cool to see that he, uh, yeah, that like world champion title was definitely not just like a flu or whatever. He's, he's back at it and he's been putting in the work and uh, wow, super proud of that guy. Wow. I don't know how Jeez. he does it. Insane. So we're going to get our riders together to hop on that podium. We'll have all the details from the podium, and we're going to sit back, you, me, and Darren Bearcloth, and really talk about the details of this competition, what we can expect in the future. Crankworks, Innsbruck, Slope Style, what a doozy. Stick around. we got plenty more coming your way. TV. Download the app for free and enjoy more mountain bike live events, films, and shows. Sign up to download your favorite content and watch it offline anywhere, anytime. Oh man, as they say, I Chihuahua. What a competition. I mean, to go from where we were just 24 hours ago, thinking that this competition was going to be canceled, and we wouldn't have a world-class show to what we just experienced. And it's time to hand out some hardware, some well-earned medals out here, the coveted medals that you can only win in a Crankwork Slope Style event. David Godziak will be going home with a bronze medal, Emilio Hansen with a silver, and Brett Reeder adding to the long list of Slope Style competitions that he has won. This guy works so hard to stay on the top. And these riders, they do not make it easy for him. Oh, man, not at all. They're coming, and <laughs> they really have... He's got a target on his back. Oh, my God. Nipping at his heels, man. Emil Johansson. I got to think that when Brett first saw Emil, he probably went, oh, boy. Dude, like, if... the fire is... <laughs> the fire has never gone out underneath him. There's always somebody with a massive torch underneath Brett Reader. <laughs> Man, totally. And I feel like if I'm going to do the announcing in Worcester, I have to go home and practice, because Emil's <laughs> run and Brett Reader's runs is like, either you have to be a rapper or, like, a two-stroke. <laughs> 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 It makes it fun, though, doesn't it? You know, you really appreciate how hard these tricks must be to do when it's so hard just to say the names of them. <laughs> Dude, these guys are definitely making our job harder. Our job harder and the judges' jobs harder. Up in the game of everybody around them, 
These top three riders. You know, I gotta feel like the guy who's about ready to accept his bronze medal right now, David Godziak, we're gonna watch his run. I gotta feel like his performance kicking off the event just set the tone. Man, if I would have watched this run five years ago and someone would have said you got third with this run, yeah, I would exactly. have thought it was a joke. Oh my! Yeah, let's consider that, everybody. This is not a winning run right here. This isn't a second place run. This is a bronze medal run, and it all comes down to little tiny subtleties. That straight flip, step down, probably cost him a lot, but he needed that to be able to set up and be ready for not only just a double backflip, but a variation on it, a double backflip X sub. Exactly. It's cool to see that we have all the different riders, like Brett that is doing big tricks all the way down, some riders that are doing big tricks here and there, but then, yeah, saving some, some of their energy on a few features. And if you can you compare, like, you know, I guess if you were to try to point out a weak point in David Godziak's run, which is a crime to even try to do that, you would say it's that straight flip out of the whale tail, and then you compare what Brett and Emil did, Emil had a 360 tail up, huge combo. Brett had an opposite truck driver. So spinning opposite direction, always rewarded. Big combos like a three up, always rewarded. But look at this, this is a way to kick off a crankwork slope style career. Podium. Oh my God, 4,000 euros is gonna be a millionaire back in Poland. <laughs> we've seen, we've seen a Godziak take home a medal from a Crankwork Slope style before, but it was a different Godziak. What a talented family. Wow, <laughs> this is big. I'm so happy for this guy. And I think he's very happy for himself as well, because he, know, he knows what he's been going through. Oh and uh, this makes it all worth it. Yes, Emil. I agree with Michaela. She said, I think you just reached ninja status. The headband confirms the riding this guy is doing. Nothing short of ninja status. Absolutely. <laughs> That's relief. <laughs> now, if you haven't watched the 22-minute documentary about his Epstein-Barr disease and the process of trying to get to the bottom of why his body wasn't working, he went through so many health struggles. It's all documented. Go to Red Bull TV. I believe it's called Every... What is it called? Emil. It's E-M-I-L. -E Every something I've learned. Every yeah. mystery I've lived. But look at this. Brett Reeder taking yet another slope style title here. Keeping his hopes alive for the overall series and the Triple Crown. <laughs> now, this will be the second now time I also in his start career. Crying. <laughs> this will be the second time in his career he's been in contention for the Triple Crown going into Joyride. Do you guys remember how that pressure just crushed him? Do you think he's more equipped now mentally, based on some of the interviews we've heard, to be able to handle that Triple Crown pressure? Person. Definitely uh, throwing up, I would say. Yeah, some of that stuff he said in those interviews, I mean... Man, totally. And, I mean, the more, you, the more you practice, the better you get. So I definitely think that Brett is more equipped now. Yeah, I think the thing that really sticks out in my mind was the interview that we heard from Brett Reeder where he was saying, you know what, the... The rivalries used to bother me, but now I realize it elevates the game. And the big one that he said was, I used to think that it was a crime if I didn't win a contest because I'm so prepared. But now he realizes how many variables go into it. And it's got to be a perfect storm to win it because just a slight bobble could throw you off. So the champagne shower, well deserved. I think that's illegal right there. <laughs> In America it is. Oh. Brett Reeder with the win, Emilio Hansen with second place, <sighs> David Godziak, first appearance, bronze medal. We're gonna get a judge up here and really talk about it because we tried, we tried to just go and side by side comparison of Emil's run and exactly. Brett's run. Exactly. We were trying to remember what the tricks were and we're going, oh my gosh. Now I actually remember, I think it was an opposite let's, 360 tuck lander. Yeah, on, let's look at the, the run actually. We got the this cannon. screen here. We've got all kinds of smart people who know how to rewind the clock. Let's watch these runs. Yes, please. Okay, Emil Johansson. All the pressure because he messed up his first run. We talked to him before his run. He was feeling that pressure. I thought he was going to do a three bar to downway. And there we go, the opposite 360. Oh, that's what it was. Tuck no hander, -tuck. three whip double bar spin, 360 tail, <laughs> opposite. 
360 tabletop to down whip. I would have been happy with just that 360 tabletop. Three, three whip and air opposite 360 tail whip to top side bar spin. <laughs> then to skid to high jumping skills. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So that was what we couldn't remember. It was that oppo three tuck on the cannon. <laughs> but one thing we'll never... Huh? I'm curious if they docked him any points for the uh, the fence jump. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I can't wait we're, to get one of the boys up here. Yeah, we're gonna find exactly. out. Exactly. Oh, we're gonna find yeah. out big time. And if Brett got oh, some extra oh, points oh, for his butt, he's coming. There he is, <laughs> Grant the Chopper, head judge. We're gonna bring yeah. him in. Come on, Chop. Come on, bro. Let's get hey, a chop, microphone chop. for you. Hop right in. Let's see here. Limbo, right? I'll be I'll King Neptune here. Yeah, in the middle. Then we get the. Uh, yeah. Get the, get you the can actually be in front of me. <laughs> I could be on like a little baby carry on you, Martin. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool that you just happened to roll in right now because we were just kind of discussing a puzzling question. So Emil's run was ridiculous. Unbelievable. And he landed, feet on the pedals, hands on the handlebars, rode out for like two seconds, and then he ran into a fence and flew over the fence. Now, did you guys consider that a make because he landed it, or did you dock him at all for running into the fence and going offline? If a rider shows control on the landing, He's pulled it. Perfect. Good There's call. the answer. We Good agree call. with that, actually. Yeah, thank 100%. you. So right answer. You can stay. Well done, okay. Chop. Okay, <laughs> see ya. You know, I You wish. I knew that question was going to come. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, uh, he showed a lot of control. Although he probably had his wrists down, he was, he was going to ride away if that fence wasn't there, so. Okay, Absolutely. okay, next one. Now, if you were to try to pick apart David Godziak's run at all, yeah. it would be a straight flip out of the whale tail. Yeah. Was was it close when you're weighing out Emil's run and David's run? And was that a determining factor? Because we had a we had a world first in his run, a twist or no hander. Yeah, I mean if it was a, if it was a best trick contest, he definitely won with that, that's mm. for sure. But the thing which let him down, which didn't enable him to compete against Rita or Emil, was simply down to the drop. So it was the flat it was the the regular flip out of the whale tail. I think he did a three at the start. Yeah, we just yeah. saw that okay. right there. So it's just three. a regular three. I mean this trick here, the so twist and no hand is insane. So so it's a 450 and double truck. This part as well. So, you know, a there's a slight good. case there. But we kind of let him off with this. But How much are you guys docking for tag ups? Casing. So, I mean, it's all down to execution because the score. The spectator needs to understand that the score system is for us. Although it's great for viewing and everything, like we use that. We, are, we have our anchor scores. So, the one thing that. A case, like a foot down could be five points, but we could be a bit, a bit lenient with it. But the main thing is, is. Um, yeah, well, yeah, it's really... Oh, mate, my brain's gone. On this no, no, right now. I can see that but after in the this In the moment, we're on it. We are absolutely on it. But, yeah, um, okay. that run was insane. So this is so such a luxury for us because we watch the competition. We love it. We're such fans. And we're able to ask you the questions right here face-to-face. -face. Don't you feel bad for the viewers at home who have questions for the judges, but they can't ask them? Oh, wait. Yes, oh, they can. Uh -oh. Big oh. bike comments. Here. here we go. Someone buy glasses for the judges. Godziak run was at least 90 points. Reader gets 92 points for Sketchy's run. Seth, wait a minute, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> who are you, Cubus 14? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know. His run, he was in the right position. I don't think yeah. you need to get too hung up on on the actual score. Good point. I think it's more that where he yeah. ends up being. Of course. I'll defend and, you on that one, Chop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you were totally. to address um, this person who, you know, we should give everybody a voice, you know? Yeah. Kubas14 was your name. Okay. So if we were to address them who called Reader's Run, the winning run, yeah. the sketchiest run, what would you say about that? Because the only thing sketchy was just a foot. Oh, that was run one. Okay. Yeah, Never yeah. mind. Okay. okay. So okay. Kubas, you can now go delete that comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I give you full liberty to delete that comment. <laughs> but you know what? Backed into a corner like that, yeah. I feel like in the past that run from Brett complete. I mean, if Emil was still dealing with his health problems, yeah. that would have been an easy win for Brett. But uplifted by the young gun. Yeah, I mean, like the right at the last minute. Obviously, that's why it took so long because we want to make sure that we do come out with the right decision. And it almost comes down to having that little bit more time to make sure that we do get that decision right. And it comes down to who beat who on each jump. And it's almost like we circle that guy. He was better on that. Cool, I think. Huh? I think the biggest thing is is um, is everyone forgets the flat drop flip whip. 
Yeah. And because obviously how hard he, that is. because he's doing it so regularly now, it's almost people overlook how difficult it is. Not mm -hmm. many people are doing it anymore, and like you, people overlook that. Yeah, so exactly. we need to make sure that that's almost like two circles, if you know what I mean, in itself. Yes. So this is where Reader won, effectively. Yeah. That's so, that's so, such yeah. a good point because he was the first person to do it. Just first person to do it yeah. just a year ago, but he's still the only person doing yeah. it. So I'm glad you. You still give that the weight it deserves. Yeah. And you know what we're going to do right now? So we're going to take you off the hook, man. You need to go <laughs> get a beer, rest your brain. Thank, yeah. Thanks so much give for your coming fellow up here judges and let us grill you. Even letting Kubas because 14 this was judge a you. a hard one to judge. <laughs> and, job. and Kubas, no hard feelings. We understand that comment was after run one. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. And I I'm think sure that's the cool you're thing. happy with the results now. <laughs> <laughs> but I think but, that's the cool thing about Slopes as well. We all think differently. And it's yeah, like, and yeah. that's why we have four judges. Yeah. They might not always agree, Indians. but yeah, when so, all of them come together, we have the right winner. So w one of my uh, one of my good friends always has an opinion when it comes to slope style, and I always love to converse with him afterward. His name's Darren Bearcloth, and he happens to be a member of our team now. So we give him the opportunity to do claws call out. If you had to pick one call out, if we were down there drinking beers after the contest and we weren't working together, what would we be talking about right now? You know what, this is a pretty tough one because, you know, the judges were pretty squeaky clean in terms of where, where they're placing all the athletes. And, you know, for me, I'm going to have to go with Lemoyne's pants. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I'm going to call something out. I'm going to call out Lemoyne's pants. Like, man, that is some pretty risky. Uh... I got one. I got one. Okay. <laughs> well, well, we'll go We'll go to this first. We'll take out Lemoyne's pants. Are you calling him out for having the best pants or are you saying you're not down with his pants? Questionable. Okay, okay. <laughs> so well, you're happy that he ripped them. Oh, man. His, are those his signature Stratos pants with the aliens all over them? Lucky for you, I don't think these pants will ever see the light of day again oh, because... Man. And he this. just went for but it no, on maybe that. Maybe he just wanted to show off his tattoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> and actually, his legs seems to look exactly the same <laughs> yeah, without pants as well. Yeah, okay. Well, they are also full of stuff. I got, I got so many surprises for you. So many surprises. Guess what I got right now? What do we got? I got your winner, Brad Reader. Come on over. Oh, Brad my Reader. God. Yeah. I know you're going to slope style. How good are you at limbo? <laughs> Come on, buddy. Limbo, right? I'll make it easy for you. They didn't make it easy for you, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the show. Yeah, Let's give this man yeah, a Thank microphone. You. Thank, nice you. Work. Thank you. Thanks, man. Martin Soderstrom well always Thank taking you. advantage well of people. He was yeah. hugging Kyle straight oh. yesterday. He's kissing you. Whoa. You know. It's the sweetest thing I get. <laughs> oh, the sweet smell of victory champagne. <laughs> yeah. You guys okay. are going to smell it regardless. Oh, my gosh. Gosh. Now when okay. I kissed him on the... I got a little bit drunk, actually. Okay. <laughs> so many times in your career, you've dropped your first run, and it has worked, and you go, oh, my God, thank goodness my job is over. You get to do a victory lap. One Explain to me today the feeling of getting knocked out and knowing that you have to go back to work. Well, I was saying down there to those guys that this has happened so many times. Mm -hmm. When I do a run, it puts me in first, and then someone bumps me into second. And I'm like, okay, here we go. Like, you know, trying to hype yourself up, second run. I mean, the nerves are a little bit more depleted. You know, you don't have as many, like, dropping into the first, uh, into the second run. And uh, and then I don't do it. And then I, do, I either crash or I do, I mess something up and do a straight air. It's happened so many times recently. More so, like, when I was younger, I was able to, like, pull off second run and, and one up my uh, everyone else and put me into the first place spot but recently it hasn't been so you've been in this so situation much. enough times to where you probably know after you get a solid first run they go all right don't start celebrating too early because yeah. i might have to go back to work you did you got back up to the top of the course and you did this run let's watch it so you can walk us through what a great opportunity okay. Here we oh go. god Roll the it was it was for me it was sketch like i yeah there was there was a lot of sketchy moments here but uh Pretty, the second run, I don't think. Pretty happy. Well, yeah. The yeah, amount of times cleaner. you did that trick this week, twice. You're a guy who practices everything. The amount of tricks you times you did that trick, how many? Uh, just two. Two. So you had two runs. You did those tricks twice yeah. each. That just goes to show how hard they are. For sure. Here I was pumped. I was pumped. I did the seven bar because that wasn't really in my plan until like last moment. We are also very happy to do that. Oppo seven, right into. Reg seven Cow. bar. This is what the judges' <laughs> steno look like. A ton of exclamation points just to remind themselves that you stomped that. Ish. <laughs> Got a little sketchy there. Three down whip, switch truck, 
And then now, and then oh my, my, my God, God, here comes the ass. Here oh comes the ass. He's checked so far. All right, speed it up so no one sees it. <laughs> we knew you were going to do this. And you checked out. <laughs> oh, no. So epic. I was like, oh, Emil. Emil, like, that was kind of embarrassing for Emil. I feel bad for him. Right. And then that happened to me, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Butt crack. Man. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't have my shoelace on today. Usually I got my shoelace on, but I don't have it. So I'll tell you the truth. Um, I was I was down at the bottom uh, after my first run, and I was so happy that after our, like the lack of practice that we had, uh, that that the you threw your belt away. No, <laughs> that I did a run, and yeah. and I was in first, and like I was just stoked. Emil bumped me down, and I honestly was like. I didn't think that I could do another run. Like, that's what we're all thinking. Like, it's so complex to try to do a run top to bottom and one up your first run. I was, and Emil's been through so much. And I was like, I was like, damn, like, it'd be sick. Like, I'd be so stoked yeah. for him if like, like, it doesn't really matter. Like, if, if, if I win, that's, that's awesome. But if he wins, that's so sick for like the sport and the story and everything else. Um, and then I was at the top and I was like, Wait a second, I've come second twice here. Like, <laughs> wait, a, wait a second, yeah. like, I want this. Yeah. Like, I, I, I didn't do all that work, like, back home for a straight air run so Emil could win. But, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really relieved. And, and, uh, speaking of wanting things, yeah. I know exactly what you want me to ask you right now because I know you love this question. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I don't hey, know what he's gonna ask. Hey, Brett. <laughs> You've won the first two events of the season. Uh, How heavy is the pressure for the Triple Crown go. weighing on your shoulders? There we go. Get ready to hear that a lot for the next two months. Yeah, um, yeah the Triple Crown, whatever. Just whatever. I, I have been in this spot two times now, though. Once in 2015, I think. And then I, like, crumpled, crashed in both of my runs in Whistler. And, um, yeah, and here we are again uh, in the same position. So... Practice I makes perfect. Hey, though. I'm gonna go home and nothing's gonna change. I'm gonna practice. I'm gonna work my hardest. Uh, I'm probably gonna overwork my hardest, <laughs> like I always do. That's what and, you do. And uh, and then first enjoy for knows? a couple of days. That would be because cool though, because like <laughs> you other it. other competitors have won Red Bull Jarad like well, a lot, uh, like Brandon and um, I mean his he's Thanks. the first one that comes to mind. He's won it like five or ten times or something. Uh, so yeah, that'd be cool if I could win it two times. Well, guess what? But just but hey, that's that's so easy to say right here. I just like did my run and I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, Girl that was fired up. Yeah, but but no, it's like feels impossible before you're gonna drop in. Hey, you know what? Keep doing what you're doing, man. Yeah, it's been working year after year. You putting on such a great show for us. We gotta thank you for all the hard work you do, the entertainment value you provide us and also thanks for coming up here and hanging out with us and letting us pester you a bit yeah it's good i good used to you, compete with all you guys <laughs> I, I used to compete with all you guys and now i'm, and now I'm talking with you guys <laughs> oh, it's such a cool thing <laughs> these guys used to win contests too <laughs> oh man <laughs> the circle is complete yeah, so speaking sure. of joyride you're all excited about it and guess what there's still an opportunity to get the best seats in the house up until i believe it's june 30th we're going to be offering these VIP experience tickets, best seats in the house. Yeah, shish kebabs, vodka drinks, beer. Come on. What else do you want? Early bird tickets are available. Get them before June 30th. We're going to run out. Everybody wants them. Log on to crankworks.com slash whistler slash VIP to get yours. All right, Crankworks Festival, final day of the second stop of the 2019 World Tour. We got the king and queen overall stories. Com con continuing to evolve right now and at the end of the competition week we've got the queen of crankworks overall standings looking like this tracy hannah in fourth place annika bearden in third keelani hines bringing up second place but via verbi kind of running away with things right now 442 points now if you're wondering who's sitting on top of the king rankings well he's a familiar face you know him if you've been with us all day 
And if you've been with us all week, you've seen him compete in pump track, speed and style, and slope style. He's got the best pants in the game. That's Thomas Lemoyne. He's leading things out over Keegan Wright. Keegan competes in downhill, slalom, pump track. Adrian Lerone doing downhill, slalom, pump track, and speed and style. And the youngster from New Zealand, Billy Meeklum, bringing up fourth place there. So the season continues to heat up, not just in slope style, but all the events we have here on the Crankworks World Tour. Now, Martin, it's been amazing calling this competition with you. Final thoughts on the event today. One of the best events I have watched in my career, and I've watched many slope style events. So uh, yeah, thanks for the show, Brett, and Emil, and the rest of the riders. What a circus out here. Darren, final thoughts? You know, I'm going to have to side with uh, the tall guy over here. You Man, this competition is just getting so insane. The level of tricks, it's just getting nuts, more and more nuts. So, Brett Reader, thanks for joining us, my man. Thank you. And thanks for the thanks show. Thanks for having me. What an amazing time. Congrats. I can't wait until Joyride. And you know what? Based on what we've seen the last three years here in Innsbruck, the historical moments that this course has provided us with, I hope we'll see you again here in 12 months' time. Well, a great show. David Godziak in his first slope style appearance hops on to the third step on the podium, a bronze medal for him. Some big tumbles. We saw some of our big names go down. We saw Thomas Lemoyne earn even more points for the King of Crankworks overall. Of course, we saw Brett Reeder take yet again another win, but it wasn't easy for him. All the riders in the field elevating each other. Emil Johansson returned to form in second place. This was the Crankworks Innsbruck Slope Style. I'm Cam McCall. For Martin Soderstrom, Darren Barrickloff, McKay Legato, and our entire crew, we thank you for watching. We'll see you in Whistler. Hey guys, this is David and Simon Gojek. If you are stoked as we are on new Red Bull Bike Channel, check it out. Uh, we're gonna feel more and uh, you can enjoy it over there. See you there.